blast, and you're in Big Ten country. Y'all get your hands together. Guitars jamming, that's where we're headed. Straight up to Madison, Wisconsin, singing, Lord, I was born a rambling man. Pennsylvania to Iowa. Even Chicago's got one or two. Special thanks to some huge Ohio State Buckeye fa fans, the Rascal Flats. There you see Jim Tressel leading his Buckeyes onto the field. The Buckeyes have won the toss, and they have elected to receive. Kyle Hughes will handle the kicking duties for the Aggies. Ray Small and Lamar Thomas are back deep for Ohio State. Today's weather, 49 degrees, a little bit different than yesterday. It was about 80 here in Columbus. The weather has changed quite drastically. Dark and dreary. Big Ten College Football is brought to you in high definition by Phillips HD, available at Target, Walmart, and Sam's Club. Kick is taken by Thomas at the two-yard line, looking for a hole and tackled at the 21. And that is where Terrell Pryor and the Ohio State Buckeyes will get things started. Pryor, well, we've been noting his offensive struggles over the last couple weeks but he has bounced back last week he was terrific against Minnesota really starting maybe to turn the corner it'll be interesting to see what he does today against what people are saying are very is it a very inferior New Mexico State Aggie team well I need some help uh, Matt from that supporting cast because against Purdue when he received all that criticism the offensive line really let him down on first down from under center, Pryor going to go deep down the left sideline looking for Posey, and he's got him out of bounds at the 37-yard line. A huge gain for Ohio State, a 41-yard pickup right off the bat. Well, pretty good coverage by New Mexico State. The only problem is that Posey's 6-3, and he just went up over the top of him. The, the ball was perfectly thrown, and obviously they're open and wide open today against the New Mexico Aggies. State Aggies. Devere Posey last week, 62 yards and a 57-yard TD reception. He had 161 yards. That was a 43-yard pickup for Posey on first down. Now this time, they get to Brandon Sane, and he's got nowhere to go. Maybe a gain of one. Now for the Rotel Velveeta starting lineup, because you can't start your game day without famous queso dip. Take a look at the backs and receivers. Brandon Sane will get the majority of carries at running back. Devere Posey, Dane Sanz Sanzenbacher, the wide receivers. The offensive line, different starting five for the fifth game. As you see, Andrew Moses will make his first start of the year at left guard. Second and nine from the 35-yard line. Pryor looking deep. Now he's going to throw. He lets one go, looking for Sanzenbacher in the end zone off his hands. And incomplete. Good, good pass breakup by the defense of the Aggies. But, you know, this is the type of play, I can tell you, that'll drive, drive Jim Tressel crazy because they could have came down with it. But there was two defenders back there, and Pryor just threw it up for grabs. And, you know, the competition that they're going to face in the next couple of weeks, they'll take that away. Devon House was there forcing the play. And this will bring up a third and long, third and nine. 
three wide receivers in the game for Ohio State. As Pryor comes under center, Sane in the backfield. Pryor, plenty of time, launches one, but some miscommunication as he was trying to hit Sanzenbacher in the end zone. Sanzenbacher pulled up, stopped on his route, and that falls incomplete and will bring up a fourth down in Ohio State. After that 43-yard pass to open up the game, they're going to be forced to punt. Well, yeah, they had one big play, and then all of a sudden, you you know, you run the ball in the next series, and you don't get anything, and then you throw it up for grabs, and then you throw a foul ball, and you, know, you can almost hear these Ohio State faithful getting ready to boo in the first series. Check that. No punt. A 52-yard a field goal attempt. Petri is the kicker. Snap is down. The kick is low. It may have been blocked. No good. So Ohio State. Nothing doing on their first possession and the New Mexico State Aggies will take over on offense when they, where they have struggled this entire season. Well you take a look at this kick and I was wrong. I already heard a couple of boos partner <laughs> but it looked like he might have slipped a yeah. little bit and he hit a knuckleball. He looked at the holder but it looked like it was a pretty good hole for me. you know and you know Aaron Pe Petrie is about as good as they come but he's missed a couple and missed hit a couple that you wouldn't expect out of this kicker. So the Aggies take over on offense at their own 35 yard line. Jeff Fleming is in at quarterback as the Aggies will rotate quarterbacks throughout the game. They'll go with the hot hand and this first pass is a completion to Kyle Nelson for a gain of about five. Well that was good execution and there's New Mexico State. They're operating out of the pistol offense. Here's the starting lineups brought to you by Rotel and Velveeta. Seth Smith, he leads the team in rushing yards. He's been terrific. He is basically their only offensive weapon. He averages about 98 rush yard, rushing yards per game over the last seven. But just one touchdown, this Aggie team has some trouble getting into the end zone. On second down, the give is to Smith, and he's got nowhere to go. Tackled right at the line of scrimmage and brought back. Take a look at the defensive unit for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Thaddeus Gibson, Doug Worthington lead the way on the offensive line. Don't overlook Denlinger either. Austin Spittler, Brian Roll, and Ross Holman, the linebackers roll, leading the team with 66 tackles. Anderson Russell gets the start at free safety. Kirk Coleman, he has been just a force on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, ball. He has three interceptions this year. Third and five, they need to get the ball just past the 45 yard line and they are not going to be able to do that as the tackle was made at the 41 a gain of maybe two on the play and Ohio and pardon me New Mexico State goes three and out. Well they ran a little bit of trickery there they ran the option play with the trailing receiver on the shovel pass and they decided to go to the shovel pass and they just came up short. Kyle Hughes handles all the kicking duties for New Mexico State. He handles the kickoffs, the field goals, and the punting duties. He is back to punt. Ray Small is back at the 10 to receive. A booming punt. Small steps up, fields at the 15. Cuts across the 25 and tackled at the 31-yard line. Ohio State, nothing doing on their first possession. They'll take over when we come back here from Columbus. Back here at the Horseshoe, that's Dwayne Walker, the first year head coach of the Aggies, takes over for Hal Mummy. Came over from UCLA, was the defensive coordinator there for three years, and really is a defensive guy. Knows that the offense has some troubles, but the first thing he had in mind when he came over to New Mexico was fixing the defense. On first down, Ohio State, the give is the same to the left, looking to cut back as an opening, a pickup of four for Brandon Sane, coming off a concussion from last week. He is okay to play. Take a look at the offensive line for the Aggies. Pierre Phils, he gets to the quarterback. He's got a lot of speed on the end. Linebackers, Ross Connor, Jason Scott, Jamar Cotton. And the cornerbacks, Devon House, he broke up that attempt for a touchdown earlier with a fine play on second and six. Pryor, quick out to the right side. He's got Ray Small trying to escape a defender and is able to pick his way for a gain of six, very close to the first down. 
And it looks as though they're going to give him the first down marker. You talk about Dwayne Walker, the head coach of Mexico State. He's not only the head coach, but he calls all the defense. He has a defensive background. In fact, he played defensive back for the Minnesota Golden Gophers back in the early 80s. Real early 80s. You got to like him then, huh? Yeah, he didn't play for me. I, I wish he did. <laughs> First and 10 from the 40 yard line. Pryor from the shotgun. Three wide receivers out to the left. Pryor looking for Posey, almost picked off. Oh, there, he, that's Devon House. We were just talking about him moments ago. He steps up as Pryor was trying to force the ball into Posey. But you know what I don't like? Watch how many times Pryor pats the ball before he throws it when he starts doing that those defensive backs they're breaking up look at that you got to throw on time that should have been six the other way would have been a disastrous start for ohio state as devon house made a fine play on the defense as posey fell down this time the handoff nothing doing Loss of one on the play. Brandon Sane with the carry. Jason Scott made the tackle. He stepped up from the linebacker position. Here's another look at that play. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but look, he's holding the ball. Look, he's patting it. He's patting it. Then he goes to throw it. And you know what? Look at his footwork. He's not stepping into it. He's throwing off his back foot. He's not even having his shoulder squared. That's why he's having some problems. It's technique, fundamentals. And if you follow his eyes on the play, he yeah. was looking at Posey the entire time. Didn't want to go anywhere else. Third down, Pryor again from the shotgun. Three wide receivers, fakes the run, now pulls back. Now he's looking to run. Steps up to the left, has one man to beat, and then he's free, he gets by him. And he's able to get to the 50 and a first down. Great run by Terrell Pryor, forced out of bounds by Jonte Green, a gain of 11 on the play. But, but, but watch here, he's faking the dive, there's no back there, and here's the problem. Yeah, this is just an athlete making a play, but if you're Jim Tressel, if you're Jim Bowman, you're saying, you know what, that's not what we designed, that's not what we worked on, that's a broken play. Pryor this season has run the ball 101 times for 471 yards, five touchdowns. And he starts it out with, with an 11-yard run. Now a timeout taken by New Mexico. Timeout, New Mexico State, first. Referee John O'Neill. So the Aggies trying to stop Ohio State. Ohio State looking to put some points on the board. We'll be right back. Football Breakdown presented by Polaris. Tuesday at 10 Eastern on the Big Ten Network. Matt Rosen, Glenn Mason here with you at Ohio Stadium. There's a look at head coach Jim Tressel, his ninth season running this program, an 89 and 21 record. We met with him yesterday, and in talking with him, he seemed very happy to be playing this game and not just having a bye week. Well, there's no doubt. You know what? Pryor, what an exceptional athlete he is. He, he takes nothing to make it something, but you know, he's not liking what he's seeing right now. And Jim was emphatic. He was so happy about this game because obviously the loss to Purdue was was terrible. And they sort of had a quiz, a pop quiz against Minnesota. Here's another pop quiz today and to get ready for the big test next week. So he's trying to use this game to judge if they're on the track to the improvement that he expects. There's a player down. It's Chris Romero, the left tackle for the Aggies. Now for the first time today, let's check in with Dave Revson in our Big Ten Network studios with a Preston game break. Dave. Thank you, Matt. Iowa has trailed in seven of its eight wins, so this should not shock us. Darius Willis, four-yard touchdown run, capping off an 11-play, 69-yard drive, 7-0 Hoosiers in Iowa City. There's a look at the matchup. Thank you very much, Dave. The 71st time those two teams have met in school history. Iowa, 8-0 for the first time. They've been rolling, but they have some injuries at that running back position. Well, I don't agree with Revson. I'm kind of shocked that <laughs> Indiana playing on the road. Kinnick Stadium was able to take it and drive it all the way down the field against Norm Parker's defense. I don't know. I, yeah, maybe maybe Iowa is, uh, is living the charm life, huh? Possibly. Well, we will see in the weeks to come. It'll be very interesting as the Big Ten season winds down. So Chris Romero being helped off the field and looks to be okay. 
easy for you to say, Sir, partner. He's got two guys <laughs> well, helping him off both there. Legs. He's not going off on a yeah, car. Yeah, but he's a football player. He wants to get back in his game. It's the only time he'll probably ever get into the horseshoe. And that's bad news for Dwayne Walker because in that program, New Mexico State, I guarantee it, they don't have great depth. And the guy that's going to replace him isn't going to be near as good as that guy, Chris Ramiro. Darrell Pryor on that first down play. It was a loss of two on the run. This will be a second and 12 for Ohio State at their own 49 yard line. Their first drive started out with a 43 yard pass to Devere Posey, but then after that was forced to kick a field goal. They missed that field goal, and now here they are looking to get on the board for the first time today. Pryor hit as he throws, and that ball comes off his hand and bounces just shy of Sam King the linebacker for the New Mexico State Aggies it'll bring up a third down well I'll tell you one thing Jim Cordell has been out with an injury and he's back but I'll tell you that New Mexico State defender ran around him like he was stuck in cement so third and nine for Ohio State the penalties decline third down third down Legal man down, an eligible man downfield. That's referee John O'Neill on the call. Penalty is declined, so it'll be bring up a third and nine for Ohio State. Check that third and twelve for Ohio State. Four wide receivers. Pryor has some time. Floats it out to Devere Posey and. Maybe a gain of one. Sorry, that was Deron Carter with the completion. And for the first time today, Ohio State will be forced to punt. Are you impressed so far with the job that New Mexico State is doing? They've executed well in offense. Position-wise, they've been excellent on defense. They haven't always made the play against Terrell Pryor, but a lot of people don't. But I'm impressed, and I can hear this, this uh, Partisan crowd here in the horseshoe. They're starting to grow. <laughs> Pretty soon they'll be the booze. I promise you. I've been here many times. Well, this is a team, this Aggie team, as Petri punts. And it's part, pardon me, that's John Tomo who punts. Marcus Anderson lets it bounce, and it's down at the 18 yard line. So the Aggies will take over after a 32 yard punt. They will take over at the 18. We'll be right back. No score, first quarter. Back here at Ohio Stadium, no score, 803 left in the first quarter as the United States Marine Corps salutes Ohio State's strong safety Kirk Coleman, today's leader of the game. He is a lot quarter final, lot trophy quarter finalist for the defensive impact player of the year. He has been terrific. The option as they dish the ball off. Well, Ohio State is awfully hard to run on, and especially sideline to sideline because of their great speed. And I think they're going to have to establish the inside run if that's possible before they, they've tried to go outside right away. They probably don't think that they're a match up front interior to run against those four defensive linemen that are very good. Todd Lee on that carry, second and eight for the Aggies. Jeff Fleming in at quarterback from Fullerton, California, junior college transfer. I'm talking with Dwayne Walker. He's hoping to get better quarterback play out of both QBs. Fleming steps up, looking to run. He's got some good moves as he trips and falls, getting out to the 26-yard line, maybe the 27, a gain of six, and shy of the first down by about a yard. Well, he was under a little bit of pressure, and he pulled the ball down, and I like what he did. Now watch here. He runs, and all of a sudden he goes, oh, baby, I'm going to the sideline. <laughs> too, many, too many scarlet shirts there. I'm going to go to the sideline and come back and play another play. But this is a big down right here for the Aggies. They need to pick this up first down and keep their defense on the sideline, even though Ohio State stopped moving the ball. This would be a big confidence boost for their offense. Third and a long one. They need to get to the 28-yard line. Seth Smith in the backfield. They fake the option, and there it is. The quarterback sneak, just like you said, as Jeff Fleming takes it himself. 
out to the 33 yard line, a gain of five on the play, and an Aggies first down. Well, it wasn't exactly a quarterback steed. It was more like a quarterback fake and run up the middle. But, you know, when they see that open right area over the center, and they only need about a yard against this uh, Buckeye defense, that sneak is as good as anything. Now, I'm going to tell you, partner, what's starting to happen right now. Go ahead. I've been there before. They're, they're obviously outmatched in Mexico State, but they're starting to tell their coach, these guys aren't as good as we thought they were. And their coach will be saying, that's what I told you. From the shotgun, play action. Fleming steps up, throws it out to the sideline, and that's incomplete. They intended for Darius Preston and went off his hands. Big Ten fans around the globe will be able to watch their favorite football teams this fall with Big Ten Ticket, the Big Ten Network's new international streaming package. All televised Big Ten Network football games will be available live and on demand online to viewers living outside of the United States and Canada on Big Ten, Big Ten Ticket.com. So tell your loved ones overseas that they won't miss the action. Second and 10 from the 34 yard line. This time Fleming comes under center and the give is to Smith has a lane and he's able to pick up about four or five on the play out to the 39 yard line. I like those type of runs a lot better those quick hitters because if they get anything they're going to gain when they go sideline to sideline sometimes it looks like they've got an edge on their defense and they might gain grounds but high state just too fast run right at it. Seems as though. New Mexico State starting to get a little confidence that they can run the ball maybe. Seth Smith is a runner that can run. He's averaging 87.9 yards per game. And about 21 carries. They give him a lot of the, the action. On third down, Fleming this time throws across the middle. That's a first down. Dropped it. Darius Preston, no, they say incomplete. He dropped it. He had it. He had the first down, but he couldn't hold on. You think a little case of nerves? Let's watch it right here. You know what he did? He took his eyes off the ball. Partner, I'm going to tell you, I used to tell my players all the time, you catch the ball with your eyes. They'd say, you mean your hands, coach? No, your eyes. We know you get the ball's going to hit your hands. Look it on in. Kyle Hughes to punt. Ray Small is back at the 16 yard line to receive. High kick, good kick, forces Small back to the five. It bounces at the five, takes an Aggies bounce, now rolls into the end zone for the touchback. Aggies almost got a huge break, but. Oh, but you talk about field Mexico position. State. Ohio State will take over at the 20 tonight in prime time. It's a Big Ten Conference showdown under the lights as the Spartans look to bounce back from last week's heartbreaker when they travel to Minnesota tonight in high definition presented by Hampton Hotels 8 p.m. Eastern only on the Big Ten Network Michigan State and Minnesota should be a good one. That's your former school. Oh yeah. That, but... On first down the handoff goes to Jordan Hall a pick up a four that's his first carry of the game. There's a look at the Big Ten standings Ohio State with that loss to Purdue a few weeks ago four and one in the conference Ohio State uh, excuse me Iowa rolling an eight and no record four and oh in the conference but the last three weeks of the season really are going to determine what's going to happen with the Big Ten. Well you got that right you look at the standings. I think some teams might not be as good as the record and some teams are better than the record. Here's Pryor out to Carter at the 30 yard line. Gain of seven on the play. And an Ohio State first down. Deron Carter coming into the game just nine receptions. He has two in today's game. See that route versus that coverage. That's what I used to call a gimme. They're playing soft coverage or running a short out route. That's pitch and catch. If you can't complete that 90% of the time, you shouldn't be throwing it. First and 10 for Ohio State. Breyer from the shotgun. And again, they give us the haul out to the 33 yard line. And a gain of three, two, maybe three on the play. I was really interested in the discussion we had with Jim Bowman yesterday. You know, I was always, uh, I wasn't in the spread offense. Mine was always downhill running. They run the inside and outside zone like we ran the inside outside zone 
at Minnesota, but it's so much different for the back because everything starts lateral, where everything started downhill in the offense I ran. Second and seven for Ohio State. Pryor once again from the shotgun. He has one run today for 11 yards. Pryor steps up, dumps it off, and it's in and out of the hands of Devere Posey. He had it, he was looking to run before he caught the ball. Let's head downstairs to Anthony Aaron. Anthony, what's going on? Well, I don't know about you guys, but speaking to the coaches yesterday, when they spoke about trying to get that balance on the offensive side of the ball, I'm surprised so far how often they've dropped Terrell Pryor back and allowed him to throw the ball from the pocket because no matter who you're playing against, that does put additional pressure on the offensive line. Well, that's a good point, but you know, I think down the road they think they're not going to be able to run the ball in those three remaining games, so they've got to try to work on this passing game. Third and seven, Ohio State needs to get to the 41-yard line, and a flag comes in. Full start. 66 offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. It's not what Ohio State's looking for on offense. And it's Andrew Moses who's filling in as the left guard today. It's pretty balanced. Seven rush, nine pass. The problem is neither one of them have been effective. Well, they've thrown the ball. They've had some drops already in this game. They had the big play early to Devere Posey. And then they had some miscues with uh, that long ball trying to hit Dane Sanzibacher. So third and 12. Pryor pulls it down. He's got plenty of room. Pryor across the 40 to the 50. Still on his feet, out of bounds, inside the 45-yard line of the Aggies. A huge pickup for Terrell Pryor, a 27-yard run. It goes back to what we said before again. Now, if I'm Jim Trestle and I'm on the sideline and I see my quarterback, he drops back. And look at this. He didn't pat the ball. Now he pulls it down. It wasn't designed. It's not a quarterback draw. It's a broken play. And I can't rely on that all the time. And if I am, I might as well just call a quarterback draw. First down, Pryor again from the shotgun. This time they give us to Hall up the middle. We gain three to the 41 yard line. Now, isn't that what Ohio State's looking for out of Pryor, though, to make the decisions to say, hey, if there's no wide receivers open downfield, pull the ball. If you've got the room, run and make something because he is a terrific athlete. Well, absolutely. I I'm not trying to be critical of what's taking place there. Make the right decision, pull it down. But what I'm saying, as far as their comprehensive offense, they're not getting accomplished. I, I don't believe what Jim Trestle wants to get accomplished. Second and seven for Ohio State. The fake to Hall. Quick toss to Sansenbacher to the 36-yard line, a gain of about five on the play. Now, that's what he wants to see. That's the way it was done, and he got back, he set his feet, and he put the ball right on the money, and that's execution. The other stuff is decision-making, and he'd rather have to do that, but this is what he's looking for. Right on the money, give it to your receiver, get as much yardage as you can. A third and one now for Ohio State. There's two tight ends in the game, Ballard and Jake Stoneburner. They give us to Hall, has the first down. Three-yard pickup for Jordan Hall, who saw some action last week. He had 38 yards in his first career touchdown versus Minnesota on an 11-yard run a week ago. Now, remember that, that play right there. You'll, you'll see him running here. That's There's that touchdown from a week ago. Yeah, that was awful good block. In front of Let's remember this third and short right here. They ran the ball. They picked up the first down. New Mexico State jumped into a goal line defense. Watch out next third when they may go for the home run. High State. Posey and Sansenbacher out to the left to give us to Hall. He has some room across the 20 yard line. Jordan Hall, a gain of 13 yards. He's running the ball real well for Ohio State early here in the first quarter. Now, Coach Dressel said, This is what I'm talking about. This is Ohio State football. Put a hat on a hat, block the guy, get running north and south, and pick up positive yards. That's what we've been working on. On first down, the give again is to Hall out to the left. And maybe a yard or two for Jordan Hall. First time in the red zone. This is the Honda Generators red zone. 32 possessions for 23 scores. They've been in the end zone or put points on the board 71.9% of the time. That's the lowest percentage in the Big Ten. Ohio State 
needs to improve on that today. That's not good enough. You got that right, partner. As a coach, you want 100% when you get in the red zone. 11th play of the drive for Ohio State. Pryor from the shotgun, fakes the hall, rolls out to the right, throwing end zone, looking for Sansenbacher. And it's incomplete. Now, that was incomplete, but for me as a coach, that was well executed because Pryor came close, but he put that ball one place where only the receiver could catch it in the end zone, and that was outside. So you start talking about just split hairs there, just a little bit, you know? Because if he, I would have liked a little bit better effort by Sanzibar. He, he put one hand up there. God gave you two hands to catch the football. <laughs> put it up there. Some guys can catch with one hand. Uh, yeah, but you know, if you catch good with one, gets better with two. So a third and nine on the 18-yard line. Another third down for Ohio State. They're two for four on third down today. Pryor under pressure, throws it. That's complete to Jake Ballard. Inside the 10 at the 8-yard line, a first down after a pickup of 10. Just, just let's take let's take a look at this again. You can see that you know the, the protection broke down. That was their big problem for prior against Purdue. I thought they, you know, they worked hard to correct those problems. They have to correct those problems. Again, that pressure coming from the left side, Andrew Moses filling in at left guard today. End of the first quarter, no score, but Ohio State on the doorstep. They're looking to put points on the board for the first time today. Second quarter coming up, Ohio State threatening. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm James Laurinaitis, and you're watching the Big Ten Network. Matt Rosen, Glenn Mason here at The Ohio State University. No score after one quarter of play. Coach, very shocking. No score. Ohio State hasn't been able to put points on the board yet. Well, how about Dwayne Walker, New Mexico State, Las Cruces, New Mexico? Nothing, nothing after one. I'm ecstatic. And if I'm Jim Trestle, let me just tell you something. Work in practice need a lot more work. They haven't put any points on the board yet, but they're knocking on the doorstep. This time, Trump Pryor untouched into the end zone a touchdown eight yards for Pryor, and just like that ohio state is on the board yeah well, that's right it, it, it took them more than a quarter but they got in there and it's been all prior with his legs not his arm a 13 play 80 yard drive four minutes 54 seconds and that was a lot better for for prior on that drive he, he was terrific throwing the ball and using his legs, ran a couple times, ran for that first down on third down, picked up a big play. Well, he was better. I'm not sure I'd say that he was terrific. <laughs> I'll have to disagree with you a little bit. Petri for the point after, and it's good. Ohio State via the eight-yard touchdown run of Terrell Pryor on the board. They lead the Aggies 7 to nothing. We'll be right back. State Farm wrap-up immediately after the game, only on the Big Ten Network. Okay. Back here at Ohio State University, the Buckeyes on top, seven to nothing. A 13-play, 80-yard drive. Terrell Pryor, an eight-yard touchdown run to cap things off. As Aaron Petri, Petri will kick off. Donye Coleman is back deep. And it's an onside kick, and he recovers. Petri recovers his own kick. I love it. Wow. I love it. I love it. A trick play for Ohio State, and it worked to perfection. Yeah, I don't. Those coaches that try those onside kicks, I don't know about those. I love it. I think it's there. That's what you do. And you know, I think that that's great by Jim Trestle. That's setting the tone for his team. Let's go. Let's us set the tone for this game. Not New Mexico State. Well, Ohio State did it last week to start the second half, and it was a game changer. They do it again, and look at what happens. Last week it was a little pooch kick to start the second half. Here it's an onside kick. So Ohio State starts again from the 41 yard line prior, looking to go deep. And it's overthrown. Intended for Ray Small and just out of his reach. Well, Ray Small went deep. You know, he's an outstanding athlete. But just like the, the first pass that they completed deep, that was pretty darn good coverage by the New Mexico State defensive back. I'm impressed. 
out of the game comes Bray Small. As he's probably a little tired from running that far. Here's another look. Yep. Devon House for New Mexico State looking over to his coach, a former defensive back, and kind of pounding his chest. On second down, Brandon Sane up the gut. Gain of two on the play for the six foot one running back of Ohio State. Well, normally you call an onside kick when you see something scouting the film, and he, he just dribbles the ball, and he's in recovery itself, and you can see they saw this on film because New Mexico State isn't anywhere to be found. And the patience of Petri to wait and wait because he was ahead of the ball. He had to wait for the ball to cross the 40 before he could touch it. Third and eight for Ohio State at their own 43. And here comes the sun. Finally breaking through. Pryor looking to the left sideline. It's caught. It's Kavir Posey. Now uh, that first is, down across midfield. That is good execution there, partner. And it all started with the protection. He could get back. He got set. There was no one near him. I agree with you, though. I still think he's staring his receivers down. And against better defensive backs, they're going to start playing that, especially safeties. A 16-yard pickup for Posey. And it's as though you know, it's his favorite receiver. You can tell that. And he's got to almost look away. Otherwise, he's going to get burned one of these times. Here's Pryor again. It's time for Posey across the middle, trying to make a move inside the 35-yard line. Brought down at the 34, a gain of seven on the reception. What you're seeing right now is, I think, what most people expected, including Jim Fessel, from the get-go in this game. And they didn't do it the first quarter. Second quarter, at least at the initial stage of it, whole different story. Here, Posey, two touchdown receptions last week, a 62-yarder and a 57-yarder against Minnesota. Pryor forced out of the pocket, throwing deep down the sideline. And there's some contact to flag. He was looking for Posey, Devon House on the coverage. And Devon House is complaining. He says he grabbed my jersey. That's interference. Four defense. 15 yards to the previous spot. Automatic first down. Devon House very unhappy with that call. As that'll give Ohio State a first down. Here's another look at it. Both kind of locked up with one another. He did have his yeah. jersey. Devon House, you are right. <laughs> he had my jersey. Come on, official. Bad call. Got a call like I see him. Bad call. He had he hold it. That's not right. Unless you're an offensive line, and then it's okay. <laughs> Ohio State in the red zone again from the 19-yard line. Five on the play clock. Pryor takes the gift to Sane, now steps up and fires, touchdown! Dane Sansenbacher. And Ohio State now has a two-touchdown lead, a 19-yard touchdown recession reception is seventh career TD now this is a big earth-shattering news to you I can tell you already that Terrell Pryor is a lot better passer when he gets good pass protection <laughs> and that's what he wasn't getting against Purdue a couple weeks ago and he took most of the criticism you got to protect the guy you got to help him out he's struggling he's an exceptional athlete Petri for the extra point Good to cap off a five play 59 yard drive uh, lasting a minute and 55 seconds after the onside kick. So Jim Tressel making oh, a here bold move and Pryor finishing as he hits Sansenbacher for the 19 yard TD. Take a look at what's coming up this week on Ohio State's University Showcase program only on the Big Ten Network. Two touchdowns for the Ohio State Buckeyes within two minutes to start the second quarter. They now have a 14-point lead. A little windy today. Aaron Petri will kick. Donye Coleman back deep, hoping to receive this kickoff from Petri. A five-play, 59-yard drive, lasting a minute 55 after that onside's kick. Terrific drive from Ohio State. Can I say terrific on that one? Uh, I, I would agree with you. 
your adjectives that need a little cleaning up, but I'll agree with you on that one. You know, the sun's out, but you're right. The wind is picked up. Coming out of the south. Petri, a low kick. Fielded by Coleman at the goal line. Gets to the 15 and wrestled down. And that's where the Aggies will start a 15-yard return for Donye Coleman. This is what got him going, I can tell you. Jim Trestle made this call. Only the head coach can make this call. An onside kick, perfect execution. And then all of a sudden, the pass interference. And you know, I, my man Devon House over there, he was complaining. He said, hey, he's holding me, and he's right. But they got the first down, and then here's Drell Pryor putting the ball right on the money. Touchdown, Buckeyes. The Aggies now will take over at their own 15-yard line. And here's Fleming to throw, and that is batted. It's still up in the air, and it's intercepted. Ross Homan pulls it in. It went from a defensive guy to an offensive guy, back to a defensive guy. That ball was up in the air for, for about what seemed about 10 or 15 seconds. You know what you call that? Watch this. This is what you call a volleyball interception. One, two, three, I got it, my ball. Not giving it up. It hit Russell. Then Kyle Nelson had a shot at it. He was the receiver trying to pull it in. And then all of a sudden it was, oops, <laughs> here it is. Ross yeah. Holman, that's my ball and I'm not giving it up. And let's go. So Ohio State already with two TDs in the second quarter looking for more. Pryor, the gift to Sane on first down. And he makes something out of nothing, but he fumbles the ball. It's loose, and it's picked up by the Aggies. Pryor was stopped initially, then started going forward, had a couple yards, but then lost the ball, and it was recovered by New Mexico State. And I'll bet you $100 what that man said right there is, you have got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me, fellas. You got to hold on to the ball. Number one responsibility of any running back, you can't hold on to the ball, you can't play. That's the way it is. Jason Scott was there. Not sure who stripped it out. He not happy. No. I know I wouldn't be. For the Aggies, a first down at the 24-yard line. Fleming's going to keep it himself, and he's pulled down after a gain of one on the play. Jamil Hines on the tackle. Second and nine for New Mexico State. Well, you know, if you're in New Mexico State, and obviously you're out, man, I like the idea of just trying to get any type of positive yardage on first down. They only picked up a yard there. But that's still a heck of a lot better than being second and 10 or second and 12 or second and 15. And go from there. You need a little patience. Now, we've only seen Jeff Fleming in the game. As this time they get to Smith, he's got nowhere to go. Maybe a yard, but I don't think he even got that. We've only seen Fleming. Trevor Walls is the other quarterback out of Waverly, Ohio. But Fleming gives him a little bit more of an option because he can run, and that makes him more of a the, the dual threat type quarterback. You know, absolutely. And they, you know, they play two quarterback system, and you could tell in our conference call the other day, they they think uh, both quarterbacks leave a little bit to be desired. That's not being critical of them, but the development of this offense, they need better play under the quarterback. So third and nine from the 25-yard line, Fleming. Pulls it down, looking to run. Has some room, gets to the 30. Now the 35, he's got the first down and out of bounds. Forced out by Brian Roll, a run of 12 yards for the quarterback, Jeff Fleming. You know, that's impressive. I, when he pulled it down to scramble, I thought, you know, there's no way he'll get that first down, but he pulled away from him. He running for his life. There you go, put that ball away. Seven took a bad angle and he got the first down. Fleming entering this game 50 rushes for 140 yards, averaging about 2.8 yards. And he has two TDs on the ground, but he's doing a nice job recognizing, hey, there's nothing downfield. I'm going to pull it down and use my legs. Now he's got nowhere to go, but steps up, makes a few moves, and he fumbles the ball. It's loose. And I believe New Mexico State has it. <laughs> Although Kirk Coleman saying Ohio State does, and Still no official signal. 
Buckeye it's Ohio ball. State ball. What is going on here? This looks like a broken play. He has no chance. Put the ball. Oh, it's out. I don't know how they didn't get it. Thaddeus he Gibson was there. Put that the ball, ball away. Came loose. Don't man knocked it out of his hands, partner. Mike Grady, the center, he ran into him, and that's Grady trying to get the ball back. But Ohio State with another turnover forced, and they will start at the 37 yard line. Timeout, New Mexico State. Ohio State with a 14 to nothing lead here in the second quarter. No points in the first, but a much better start to the second quarter than what they had going in the first. Except for the fumble. Except for the fumble. Let's it look at this fumble again here. You know, hey, for all you young guys out there watching, you got to tuck that ball away. He's, that's terrible ball protection. Zone man knocks it out. And then if you're the guy in the bottom, you can't let someone take it away from you. You know, it looks like he has it. And the Buckeye defender takes it away. I'm not sure that if they reviewed it, they could see anything that would overturn that. But New Mexico State should have recovered that football. Well, fans go inside the conference four nights a week with four unique shows on the Big Ten Football Four Pack. Our experts bring you game plan breakdowns, interviews, and analysis you won't find anywhere else. Catch the Football Four Pack every Tuesday through Friday at 10 p.m. Eastern only on the Big Ten Network. The only cure for gridiron deficiency. And coach, I have seen your show behind the schemes, and that is one hell of a show. You do a great job there. Well, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> Denardo's a work in progress, but we're getting better. Uh, first down. Handoff. Got two yards. Brandon Sane on the carry. You know, John, Jonte Green, number one, got up and he's limping a little bit. And you know, any time that I was an offensive coach and I saw that, I wanted to go right at it the guy if he's a defensive back and see what happens. High formation now for the Buckeyes on second down. Play action prior looking to go deep. He's got Posey and he overshot him. Posey was racing down the right sideline with Devon House and Posey just out threw him by about two maybe three yards. Yeah if I'm Devon House I'm saying hey they're picking on me. You know <laughs> what did they see in the film. I'm a little better than they think you know I, the only one they got on me and it was a bad call. I didn't hold that guy. Last week versus Fresno State, Devon House had an interception in the end zone. In 2007, House had a 100-yard interception return for a touchdown. He can play. Yeah, he can. He'd like to have one here today, I'll tell you that. On third and eight, Breyer, the pass off the hands of the tight end, Jake Ballard. And it's incomplete. You know, ever since you used that word terrific to describe their offense, <laughs> they've gone to the wrong oh, way, partner. Man. What would you call it now? I said no. On the first scoring drive, I said that it was terrific. The, then, they, then they had a, 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 a drive lasting a minute, 55 seconds. They moved the ball 59 yards. That was great. Well, how would you describe it now? Well, now it's sputtering. Sputtering. Okay. I would agree with you. Petrie looking for a 52-yard field goal attempt. Gets the kickoff, and that is short. Did not have the leg. No good. So that is the second missed field goal today for Aaron Petrie. He was 13 of 17 coming in, and now he's 13 of 19 on the year. Ohio State leading New Mexico State 14 to nothing with 9.45 to go here in the second quarter. We'll be right back. Song Rascal Flats, great job, guys. Big, big Big Ten football fans, I'm telling you that. Huge Ohio State football fans. On first down for the Aggies. On the reverse, Donye Coleman nowhere to go. Loss of five on the play. I Coleman. told you about that early in the game. That going east and west, and we're sideline to sideline against the high state, just not gonna work. You gotta run at him. 
Anderson Russell there to make the play. Second and 15 for New Mexico State. You saw Austin Spittler going out there. Jim Haycock made a good point. These guys, some of these guys have been waiting in the wings to play for a couple years, and they're hungry players. They love to play. Three wide receivers out for New Mexico State. The dump off. And Tony Glenn is brought down in the backfield. Let's head back to Dave Rebson for a Preston game break. Dave. Well, Matt, the Hawkeyes are in trouble against Indiana after a shanked Iowa punt. Ben Chappell hits Mitchell Evans here. Second touchdown catch of the year for Evans. It's 14-0 Hoosiers, second quarter. 14-0 Hoosiers. Who would have thunk it? Upset in the making. Third and 18 on the 27-yard line. Aggies going nowhere on this possession. Fleming forced out. And now he's just going to tuck it and gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that'll bring up a fourth down. Aggies will be forced to punt. Quarterback should have thrown that ball away downfield past the first down marker. Here's a look at the BCS standings. Obviously, Ohio State ranked number 17, not up at the top, but Penn State and Iowa. You see Iowa there 8 and 0, but they are in some danger today. Yeah, you'd imagine. What that does to the Big Ten race if they get upset by Indiana today? It'd be a few teams smiling, I can tell you Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And how about Indiana blowing that lead last week if they win today? Hughes the punt. Ray Small says everyone get away. As the ball goes out of bounds at the 31 yard line, and that's where Ohio State will take over. Win a trip to the bowl game of your choice. Enter the Rotel Bowl Bound Sweeps on your mobile. Text Rotel to 20284 and maybe you'll be bowl bound. You know, you mentioned uh, Iowa. OSU next week plays at Penn State. Then they have Iowa on the 14th at Michigan. You know, to wrap up their, their Big Ten schedule, you wonder how important will that game be going down? And uh, Ohio State looking better today. Certainly in the second quarter. Well, we're an insane nowhere to go. Sorry. Regardless what happens today, I'm going to tell you, when you look at Ohio State, who they play, at least the next two weeks, both those games are huge. And then the Michigan game is always huge if you're an Ohio State guy or a Michigan guy. Boom Heron seeing his first action in a few weeks. That was he, him on the last carry as he's been out with an ankle injury, a loss of two on his first carry. Done in the end zone five times this season, averaging 3.7 per carry. On second down, Pryor. The five on the play clock. Gives it to Heron. He's got some running room across the 35, brought down at the 20 at the 37. Let's head back to Dave with another Preston game break. Okay, Matt, it has been all Wisconsin so far against Purdue. John Clay, his second touchdown run of the game, and the Badgers have just blocked a punt literally seconds ago, brought it in for a touchdown. It's now 23-0, extra point pending. Wisconsin's won three straight games over Purdue, looking for their fourth straight win. Well, they had a bye week last week, so obviously the Badgers make good use of their time. On third and short, Pryor looking for room. Now he's got plenty of room down the right side, across the 50. And he's brought down by the collar at the 35-yard line. Terrell Pryor making something happen there. 27 yards for the Ohio State QB. He is just a phenomenal athlete. There's not many guys, if any guys, in the country that can run with this guy. The strength of this football player, and I'm not saying he can't pass, but the strength of this football player is from the waist down. He's a tremendous runner. Made a good decision there not to force anything, had running room, and took advantage. First down from the 35 as Ohio State threatening for their third touchdown of the second quarter. Now here's a design run for Pryor, nowhere to go 
in the middle, tried to break it out to the left side, and he's brought down maybe a loss of three or four on the play. Bad decision by Pryor there. You know, one thing about a play like that, you want to get going north and south, and what I mean by that is you got to keep going, even if there's nothing there, go to the goal line. Don't try to bounce it out like that. Yeah, he can get away with it sometimes because of his speed, but more often than not, that's what's going to happen. You're going to go backwards. Let's talk about Jim Tressel and the offense. For Ohio State, what, what are the things they need to improve on to become more efficient moving the ball down? I think it all starts with their running game. Their base running game, they don't have a lot because they run out of the one-back set so much. Aaron, the reverse. They're Looking throwing the ball. to throw. Carter to the end zone. Sanzenbacher, touchdown! Oh, what a play! Why wouldn't we have some trickery on Halloween? Let's face it. A 39-yard touchdown pass. Sanzenbacher and Ohio State has a 20-point lead. Let's get back to the question. I think that their base running attack out of the one-back zone, the inside and outside zone, has got to come through. And, you know, and then every once in a while, and, and, and uh, Jim Bowman talked about they have a lot of carryover from a two-back running set, too, when they need it. But they need to get that going with some consistency. I said it was Carter on the pass. My apologies. Devere Posey let it fly. And the extra point is good. A 70-yard drive, five plays, two minutes and 50 seconds. And Ohio State has a 21-point lead. Here it is again, the big bomb from Posey. So he Welcome back to Ohio State University as the Buckeyes have jumped out to a 21 point lead. Take a look at this stat 15 drives of two minutes or less. And right there, a 39 yard catch from Posey. 50 seconds, five plays, 72 yards. That's Devere Posey's first career touchdown pass. Aaron Petri to kick off. Donye Coleman back deep for New Mexico State as the Aggies look good in the first quarter. They were holding their own, and then all of a sudden, Ohio State, they scored. Then the onsides kick. They scored again, and now they have a three touchdown lead. Coleman trying to break free. He gets to the 30 yard line and brought down there. Well, here we go. A little trickery on Halloween. A little reverse pass. Severe Posey, and he sets up. Look at him. He looks like a quarterback back there. And you know what, Matt? I'm going to make you a bet. That's his first career touchdown pass. I bet you it's not his last. He looks good. Look at that. He even looks, he even looks the guy off. Terrific play. Look at Pryor, too. He was running down the field. I don't know if he was thinking about blocking or maybe trying to catch a ball, too. Well, maybe he was trying to cover for Posey in case it was an interception. He could make the tackle. Down on the field right now is Ohio State's kicker, Aaron Petri, who got hurt on the return. He looks to be in pain. Oh, man. You know, and, and I, let me tell you something. You know, those kickers, if it's a leg injury, which it looks like it is, it's not very good. I, I can look by Jim Trestle's reaction that he's a little nervous there. Now, Petri's been having a tough year for him because he's a kicker, place kicker, deluxe, and he's missed some kicks and missed hit some kicks this year that he normally doesn't do. He's not putting any pressure whatsoever on that right leg. Not a good sign for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Now, this puts a Winston whole different game. meeting for the backup kicker now. I can tell you that. He had one of the best jobs in the house. Now, all of a sudden, look out. And that backup kicker is Devin Barclay, a junior. So we'll probably get to see him a little bit later in the game. Seth Smith, nowhere to go. Maybe a gain of one on the play. Here's a look at the kickoff. Let's take a look and see if we can tell how he got hurt. Right at the end of the play, here he comes. Oh, you know, that's a that's a that's a penalty. He was blocked below the waist on a kicking down. Officials mix, missed that one. Mm, that's unfortunate. Second and eight now for New Mexico State at the 33 yard line. Three minutes, 57 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. 
Fleming. And they give us to Glynn. Out to the 35, scampering his way to the 36-yard line. A gain of three on the run. You've got to be impressed, at least I am, with the New Mexico State Aggies offense. You know, they're executing what they're doing pretty well. Now, they just don't have the people. They're going against the top-notch defense. But, you know, they're in time. The timing's good there. They're not making bad decisions. Uh, I'm impressed with what they're doing. I think that Dwayne Walker, the head coach, first-year head coach in New Mexico State, is doing a heck of a job. Third and five for the Aggies. They need to get to the 41-yard line. Fleming from the shotgun. Here comes pressure. Hit as he throws. Mm. And it's incomplete. There were three Buckeyes there, but it was Jem D. Chekwa on the hit, forcing him to release that ball a little bit early. Well, the receiver is wide open. If you bring a blitz, which they did, you know, you got to get there, or any quarterback's probably going to complete that pass. And now punting the ball away is Kyle Hughes. Back is Ray Small for Ohio State. Just over three minutes remaining here in the second quarter. A short kick fielded at the 30 by Small. Cuts back across the 40 and brought down at the 46, maybe 47-yard line. I'm impressed with the job the Mexico State's doing in the kicking game, too. Typically, when you're outmanned, from an athletic standpoint like they are. The kicking game, you really get exposed, and they've done a good job. Stay tuned for the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report with scores and highlights from today's game. That's all coming up at the half as Ohio State, with 2.58 remaining, takes over on first down at the 47-yard line. Prior, two touchdowns today, one in the air, one on the ground. Devere Posey also with a touchdown pass. I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see Jim Trestle kicking his two minutes offense here just for good training. Pryor, quick out. This time it's Carter and he drops the ball. Oh, they're going to say it's incomplete. Deron Carter, the true freshman, could not hang on to it. I guarantee you he'll be getting a phone call from his dad, Chris <laughs> Carter, because, you know, Chris was a great, great player here at Ohio State. Probably, probably the smartest player. Um, wide receiver player that I've ever been around at, at, at that level but and obviously went on to a great NFL career but he'll be coaching his son up on that one uh, second down Terrell Pryor has some time thinks about running nowhere to go on the right now he pulls it back to the left he's going to take off across the 50 and wrestled out of bounds at the 44 yard line let's head back to Dave Revson in the studios with a Preston game break Dave well, Matt, you mentioned the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. Want to let you know what is coming up, including a potential shocker developing in Iowa City. We'll show you the highlights of that, get you ready for tonight's game between Minnesota and Michigan State, and complete analysis of the game you're watching between the Buckeyes and the Aggies. That's all coming up in mere moments, guys. All right, Dave, thanks a lot. Can't wait to see the highlights from that Indiana-Iowa uh, uh, Indiana game. That's going to be very interesting. Yeah, it sure is. I don't know if that'll hold up that way because obviously Iowa has played it close to the vest. And you know that game up in Minneapolis tonight between the Spartans and the Gophers could be very interesting to see how Michigan State bounces back from that devastating loss uh, to Iowa last week. And I can tell you in TCF Bank Stadium, it's really a spectacular setting for a football game, especially at night. That will be a fun one tonight. Minnesota, Michigan State. First down, Ohio State. Terrell Pryor was able to pick up the first down. Pryor again. This time a quick pass. It's Sanzenbacher to the 36-yard line. Gain of seven. And that'll bring up a second and three with a minute 55 remaining here in the second quarter. Ohio State 21 unanswered points here in quarter number two. I'll tell you, the pageantry of Big Ten football and never more evident than it is here at Ohio State is just spectacular. Right? It's great. There's, there's no equal to Big Ten football anyplace. I know I'm partial, but that's what I feel. <laughs> well, you played football here at Ohio State. You coached at Minnesota, so you're partial. Pryor forced out. He's got the first down. Great job again by Terrell Pryor. Pick up a five. 
And a first down for the Buckeyes as they keep moving the ball. And there was Jamar Cotton, the linebacker, weak side linebacker from New Mexico State. And he's he's in pursuit. He's got to be thinking, you got to be kidding me. I've never seen a guy this fast. And at the same time, Pryor just seems like he's gliding along. Terrell Pryor needed 67 yards today. There is Aaron Petrie as he is being carted off. I'm sure they're going to take him in for some x-rays. You see some ice on the knee as he was hit by the uh, by the Marcus Anderson of the Aggies. Yeah, there was a low block on that kick return for New Mexico State, and he's, he was the recipient, and it's never a good sign when you see a player getting taken off on the cart, especially when you're the kicker. So Devin Park Barclay warming up, getting loose, knowing that his services will probably be required in a minute. Take a look. He's a former walk-on, a junior out of Annapolis, Maryland. Well, and we'll get to see what type of leg he's got. For Buckeye fans, that former walk-on's a good thing because they don't give scholarship to guys that aren't very good, so he must be pretty good. From the 30, Pryor looking deep, looking for Posey, and he overshot him. Yeah, Posey. he was turned the wrong way, looking like he was going to the left, and the ball came to the right. Well, either that, it was supposed to go to the left, and the ball went to the right. You know, <laughs> he's got to react to it. But, you know, when I was coaching, you know, we used to call that foul ball. It's <laughs> just a foul ball. Everybody, oh, no, it's foul ball. Prior rushing the ball today, nine carries, 83 yards in a TD. As you saw the graphic earlier, he's now fourth place on Ohio State's rushing list. Prior the play action, rolling to his left, and as he throws, that ball is almost picked off. Again, Devin House on the coverage. He's doing a great job covering Posey. Let's head downstairs to Anthony Heron. Anthony. Matt, the status of senior kicker Aaron Petrie does not look good right now. You saw they carted him off the field a moment ago. I spoke to the head trainer. He said right now he's listed as doubtful to return to the ball game. It's his right knee. They did some proprioceptive tests just to check for laxity, but they said he is doubtful to return to the ball game. Right now, just calling it a sprained knee. All right, Anthony, thanks for the update. Marcus Hendricks Anderson hit him low on the kickoff. A dangerous play. Anthony Doubtful, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a bold prediction. <laughs> you will not see him back in this game. <laughs> Third and long for Ohio State. Pryor looking, throwing to Sanzenbacher and almost picked off again, but there's a flag down. You need to go back to the, the previous play, Devon House, the defensive back, the corner for New Mexico State. He very easily could have had two picks for touchdowns in this mm -hmm. game, and he's dropped them both. Chris Pass interference, number eight defense, 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. That's Chris Buckner, the senior cornerback. There's, there's some contact made with Sanzenbacher. Yeah, he had his hands all over Sanzenbacher. You can see that he was yeah. holding him out. You, he's got to play the ball. You can't play the man like that. That's a good call by the official. So that was a third and ten now after the penalty of first down for Ohio State at the 15 yard line. Minute 26 remaining here in the second quarter. Take a look at the Honda generators red zone. Ohio State's been in twice two TDs. Pryor under some pressure steps up fires he's got Posey at the three yard line. You're right, partner. He had a guy right in his face. He stood tall. He put the ball right on the money. A 12-yard pickup for Posey. And Ohio State on the doorstep yet again. Here's another look. They had two Buckeyes to pick up that blitzer, and they came a little late, and they got him, but it didn't bother Pryor. I'm impressed with there right there. A lot of composure by that young man there on that play. Brandon Sane in the backfield to Pryor's right. Pryor's going to pitch it to him. Sane cuts back inside. Touchdown. A three-yard touchdown run for Brandon Sane. And Ohio State just dominating here in the second quarter. Well, here we go. Yeah, Devin Barclay, his first extra point attempt. 
Tacoma holds. Kick is up. It looks pretty good. And it is good. He kicked that awful good. A 28 to nothing Ohio State lead. 56 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. They are rolling in quarter number two. Here's a look at the Easy Living Deli off Lane Avenue. The owner's Vladi Yanikieski, a kicker. There he is. There's Yanni. There, there's Vladi, a uh, kicker for the Ohio State Buckeyes back in the late 70s. We had lunch there yesterday. I'll tell you what, they make some, some good sandwiches. It was spectacular. And I'll tell you one thing. He wasn't a kicker. He was a kicker deluxe. He is the most accurate kicker I've ever been around in coaching major college football for 35 years. Well, let's see how good of a kicker Barclay is as he boots it to the one yard line. Coleman fakes the reverse and nowhere to go brought down at the 14 yard line. Stay tuned in just a few moments. The Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report with scores and highlights from today's game coming up a 12 yard return for Donye Coleman. And New Mexico State, what do they do here with 51 seconds? Do you just run it out and go into halftime, try to regroup, or do you uh, try to make something happen and, and all of a sudden there's a turnover and now you're down 30? No, I'm down 28 nothing. I, you know, I, I haven't moved the ball the whole game like that. So what I'm going to do is the worst thing that could happen is turn the ball over, like you said, partner, and let it put a high state another one on the board. I'm going to run the ball, go into the locker room, regroup, and come out and play the second half. On first down, Fleming's going to keep it himself. Spins across the 15 to the 17-yard line. New Mexico State has run 20 plays, 38 yards of total offense. It's good defense, <laughs> and that's what you know. Let's face it, that's what we expected. Uh, Ohio State. I mean, they're a premier defense in the country. They've already had two shutouts on the year. And, you know, they, they thought they should have had a, a shutout last week yeah. against Minnesota. They're not happy about that. Jim Haycock has said, I played some younger guys in the game, and if they don't play better than that, I'm not going to play them again. So this is what you would expect. This will be the final play of the half as Fleming will just take a knee. So Ohio State, a terrific second quarter. Can I say terrific this time? Yeah, I, I, I'll give you that. All right. A terrific second quarter for Ohio State. Four touchdowns. No touchdowns in the first, but they got things rolling in the second to take a four-touchdown lead. As Terrell Pryor looked very good running the ball, moved the ball. Devere Posey threw for a touchdown. Dean Sandsenbacher, two touchdowns in the second quarter. So Ohio State leads 28 to nothing at the half over New, the New Mexico State Aggies. Let's head downstairs now to Anthony Heron. For starters, Coach Aaron Petrie, can you give us a status report? Well, I heard that uh, he got his leg banged. I haven't heard what it is. It looks like he's out, though, right now. So don't know exactly what happened, but. Uh, um, you know, that wouldn't be good for us, obviously. And on the bright side, you guys were able to move the ball, especially in the air on offense. Well, we came out thinking that we'd like to throw the ball. We knew that they would load the box up. That's just what they do, and they make it very difficult uh, for you to, uh, to run the football. This, way. this man's more important than the football team, so you better move. But, you know, we plan to come out and throw it, and, and uh, you know, we're getting some work. It's a little windy, but we're getting some work. And do you anticipate in the second half to keep your starters in pretty long? Well, you know, we want to win the game, so we'll, we'll find out how that goes, but it would be great to play some other guys as well. All right, Coach, good luck. Matt? All right, Anthony, not letting Jim Tressel go anywhere, getting the answers to the questions. Ohio State, a huge second quarter. Buffalo Wild Wings halftime show coming up when we come back on the Big Ten, Big Ten Network. It started out as a simple football cheer. Today, it has become more, much more. A bond between students, teachers, and alumni. A proud union that makes the world a better place through research and service. On campus, across the state, and around the world. It's an expression of community for Buckeyes everywhere.
season long, Champion Apparel will be showcasing the tradition and history of the Big Ten. Today, we spotlight Archie Griffin, Ohio State's incredible running back. Griffin is perhaps best known for being the only two-time Heisman Trophy winner in history after taking home the award in 1974 and 1975. With Griffin in the backfield, the Buckeyes went 45-1 and, and won four Big Ten titles between 1972 and 1975. Griffin is the only player ever to start in four consecutive Rose Bowl games and holds NCAA records for most 100-yard games, most consecutive 100-yard games, and most average yards per carry. Archie Griffin, champion. It's how you play. The Ohio State Buckeyes leading the New Mexico State Aggies 28 to nothing at the half. Let's head downstairs to Anthony Heron, who is with the great Archie Griffin. Now, of course, the man I'm standing with right now, no introduction necessary for Buckeye fans, fans all around Big Ten country. Archie Griffin, that 74 Rose Bowl team, how special was that year? Oh, it was very, very special. It was a year that we, we had a lot of success. Certainly Big Ten was pretty tough. Uh, happened to play Michigan. Uh, we had them at home, which was great for us, and ended up winning that game on four field goals. So that uh, shot us into the uh, Rose Bowl to play uh, Southern Cal for the actual third straight time. Now, your first Heisman Trophy was after that season. Did you have any expectations of going on to win another one the following year? Well, I didn't have any real expectations of winning it that year, uh, but it happened. And then after I won it, then, yeah, then I, I wanted it the next year. Uh, but, you know, I, I was very fortunate. You know, I always say that, you know, I was at the right place at the right time with the right people. And that certainly was the case during my time at Ohio State. I had some great coaches and Woody Hayes and his staff and certainly the players that I played with, those guys that were introduced, uh, they were fabulous. They made it look good. Well, Archie, believe me, I speak for everybody. I say we have been just as fortunate watching you play. Let's send it back up to Matt. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Oh. All right, Anthony, Archie Griffin in town celebrating that 35th anniversary of the 1974 Big Ten Championship team. Second half coming up in a moment. Big Ten Network football is brought to you in part by Verizon Football Zone on Vcast, only from America's most reliable wireless network, Verizon Wireless. By Auto Owners Insurance. Get to know the independent agents representing Auto Owners Insurance, keeping everything you value safe, sound, and secure. By Lipitor. And by Sonic. Your team is better. Time to let everyone know. TaterTaunt.com from Sonic, America's Drive-In. Matt Rosen, Glenn Mason, Anthony Heron with you as we start the third quarter here at The Ohio State University. Buckeyes on top, 28 to nothing after two quarters. Devin Barclay, the kicker, he is set to kick off. Tony Glenn is deep. And another booming kick by Barclay. And Glenn takes it a couple yards back in the end zone, and he has nowhere to go as he is hammered at the 13-yard line, forcing his way up to the 15. Let's take a look at today's auto owners, insurance game leaders, and Terrell Pryor, Devere Posey, and Dean Sanzenbacher. Would you expect anything less out of the leaders from uh, Ohio State today? Well, they got going a little slow, but then they turned it on. As I forget how you described that second uh, quarter performance <laughs> by their offense, but uh, you know it's it's becoming a, a one-sided game here. You, they're really having trouble moving the ball. I'm talking about New Mexico State against the defense, and Ohio State starting to move the ball like you would expect. Dane Sanzenbacher, a pair of touchdown receptions on first down. Fleming throwing the ball bounces. As we take a look at first half stats and the big glaring thing was the number of first downs 17 Ohio State first downs to just two and look at the total offense it's it's uh, it's ugly <laughs> what, what can you say and and you know in defense of New Mexico State I thought offensively that they were executing pretty well it's just that they're out man what what can you say on second and ten Fleming gives to Smith, goes left, cuts back, and a pickup of two for Seth Smith. Here's a look at what the Aggies did in the first half. Not very much going on at all. No, punt, when you look at that whole thing, uh, punt was a good result. <laughs> because they had two in the middle, the interception and fumble. 
But you know, the other end of that, yeah. they could have picked the highest state off twice for touchdowns. Uh, they, our, Devon House dropped the ball twice, and he, he might have taken it back to the house. Well, you had to be a different ball game. You have to be opportunistic, and they weren't in that first quarter. They had a chance to turn things around with their defense and couldn't do it. Third down, Fleming rolls out, dumps off to Smith. He makes the catch and then wrestled out of bounds at the 22-yard line as Ross Homan forces him out of bounds. A pickup of five, but they're short of the first down. And another three and out for New Mexico State to start the third quarter. Well, every series in a ball game is important, but, you know, as a coach coming out of the locker room at halftime, you always emphasize, boy, this first series is going to be really important. Obviously, Tim Haycock, the defensive coordinator for Ohio State, is ecstatic. Three and out, and they're probably going to get pretty good field position, and watch out. Kyle Hughes is the kicker. Ray Small back deep at the 38-yard line to receive. That one went off the side of his foot, bounces at the 50, takes a New Mexico State bounce and out of bounds at the 42-yard line and some trickery. Well, it's Halloween, man. I mean, you got an onside <laughs> kick, which I love, uh, and then all of a sudden you're going to go a little reverse pass, and uh, I would have to say this will not be Posey's last halfback pass and probably last touchdown in his career while he's at Ohio State. He put that in a perfect spot, did Posey, huh? Yeah, and what else did you notice about that? Left-handed, left man. Left-handed. <laughs> the south yeah. ball. Well, take a look at this. Terrell Pryor out of the game. Joe Bozerman is in. And the game is to Small. He's got plenty of room down the right sideline. Across the 50, cuts back, and brought down at the 35-yard line. A gain of 23 on the run from Ray Small. You know, Ray Small's a talented player. He's had a lot of talent here sometimes that some people think he's underperformed or there's some he had some other reasons why he wasn't getting on the field but that guy's a big time football player and they're going to need him coming down the stretch joe bozerman takes over at qb just four of ten this season for 49 yards he was a walk-on was playing some minor league baseball before joining the ohio state buckeyes that pass short intended for dane sanzenbacher bounces yeah, he played a couple of years of baseball, and uh, you know he's got to be an exceptional athlete. I can tell you one thing. He's been waiting on the sideline, waiting for a chance, and you know, while that, some of that criticism was being levied prior his way, I'm, throwing, I'm sure like any other player, say, hey, hey, coach, give me a chance. I, I think I can try. I can do better. We're going to find out now. We'll find out. I'm sure they're not going to just be running the ball the entire half. They'll give him some opportunities to throw. This time, it's Jordan Hall. And he scats his way up for about five yards. Brought down at the 30-yard line. Here's what Ohio State did in the first half. It started out slow, but really picked up in the second half. Well, it did. And, you know, the thing about it is they have such big play potential, and they have a threat in Pharrell Pryor any time he pulls the ball down. That's why I keep saying if they get their base running attack going, that'll be the catalyst for that offense to really click. Three wide receivers for Ohio State. As Bozerman comes under center, he's going to throw. Three-step drop intended for Small, and that went off his hands. Good defense from Jonte Green breaking it up. Now fourth down for Ohio State at the 30. And here's a question for you, because Aaron Petrie is out. They have the backup kicker, Devin Barclay. They're going to bring him in and let him try to kick the field goal. It'll be a... A 47-yard field goal attempt. This is a good thing, though, because you saw Petri go out on the wagon there. There's probably a good chance he won't be ready next year, or next week, or the week after. They got to find out about this guy, give him as much experience as they possibly can. Good snap, kick is up, and it is no good wide left. There was a problem there with this, either the snap or the hold. It bobbled a little bit, and that'll throw an inexperienced kicker off. It'll throw any kicker off, but especially an inexperienced kicker. Let's take a look at it. Watch the see the snap. Little low. So Ohio State misses out, but they still lead 28 to nothing. Well, there's a good shot at Devin Barkley. He finally gets his chance, and watch here. It's not a great snap. The holder does a good job, 
but he misses it. And you say, why? Because it was a good enough hole. Watch his plant foot. Too close to the ball, and he pulls it. He'd like to have that one back. Yeah, plenty of leg on that, but just hooked it a little bit. You said it right, got that plant foot a little close to the ball on first down. New Mexico State's going nowhere. A loss of three on the handoff. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing. You call a play like that, and all of a sudden the running back says, who called that play? That's not going to work. You got to try something different. Brian Roll in on the tackle, leads the Buckeyes with 66 tackles coming into the game. Had a game with 14 tackles versus Wisconsin a few weeks back. This, he's part of those two linebackers, Austin Spittler and Brian Roll, that Jim Haycox are hungry to play. They've been back up for too long. On second down, some play action pressure on Fleming. He dumps it off to his to Kyle Hip, a wide receiver out of San Diego, California. A gain of two on the play, and that will bring up another third down. This time, third and ten. As you see, Kirk Coleman who has had a terrific year, three interceptions, forced fumbles, fumble recoveries. He is all over the ball. Yeah, when we asked the coaching staff who's the leader of the defense, they didn't hesitate one second. Number four, Kurt Coleman from Clayton, Ohio. So a third and 10 is the Aggies trying to get something positive going. Trips to the left, Fleming. Dumps it off quickly, and that's caught by Lee, and he's wrestled out of bounds at the 38-yard line, short of the first down marker after a pickup of nine. High State came with the blitz. They blitzed both linebackers, and quarterback did a good job of getting rid of the ball. He just did too much yardage. They closed too fast, and good tackle, and got to put the ball away. Good tackle by Hines. As Kyle Hughes will punt the ball off again. Ray Small back at the 24-yard line, set to receive. Good tackle. Jamal Hines almost took his head off. I love football. <laughs> Not meant for everybody. It's a great now, game. Is that, is that what you taught as a coach, to take guys' heads no, off? No, absolutely not. you got to get him down. Ball bounces at the 30, rolls out of bounds at the 26-yard line, and that's where Ohio State will take over after a 35-yard punt. Ohio State, they rolled in the second quarter. They look to continue things here in the third. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Jack Nicholas. You're watching the Big Ten Network. Matt Rosen, Glenn Mason, Anthony Heron back here at Ohio State University. That's a look at Terrell Pryor. His shoulder pads and jersey is off. He is done for the day. I don't know if he's hurt or what the deal is, but I'm surprised he's not suited up. Joe Bosman started the second half at QB. This time he gets to Hall, who breaks free across the middle and has a big gain out to the 44-yard line. Let's head back downstairs to Anthony Heron. Anthony. I got the answer to your question, Mace. I already spoke to the training staff here. They said there's no injury for Terrell Pryor, just a coaching decision, wanting to get Joe Bowsman some reps. All right, there it is. He's just done for the day. Bowserman under center. And the handoff to Hall. Pick up of two, maybe three. It's like they're going back to their old-fashioned football. The first play they ran there was unbalanced, and they just lined up in a two-back set, ran power football, and they're running power football now. So Terrell Pryor's day is done. He ran the ball nine times, 83 yards and a touchdown, average 9.2 yards per carry. You have to be happy about that if you're Jim Trestle. And also throwing the ball 11 of 23, 135 yards and a touchdown. Started out the day nicely with that big 43-yard pass to Devere Posey. Breaking free is Hall to the 40, to the 30. Can he get by the man? No, he's tripped up at the 20 by Jonte Green. He had one man to beat, and Green forced him down. A 38-yard pickup for Hall. See, this is the running attack that I'm talking about that they have to get going. It just what you know, some people call it a counter trade. They're gap blocking. They're pulling the backside guard and tackle, giving it to the back. They're running it downhill. Power football, high State style. Hall takes a breather. Boom, Heron checks into the game at tailback. On first.
first down. They give it to Heron up the middle. And picks up three on the play. There's the Honda Generators red zone. Look at that. That's perfect. Three possessions, three TDs for Ohio State. Now that's what you want. You know, you, you want to score every time, but I'm not trying to diminish the idea of field goals, but you want those seven points rather than those three points. Jordan Hall running the ball. Ten rushes, 90 yards. That's, that's a pretty good ratio right there. And we're not done yet. Again, Boom Heron out to the left, bouncing. And picks up about a yard. Well, now if you're Jim Tressel, and you're going to put the ball in the hands, I would think, of your quarterback, but you're telling him, hey, we've got the shot at the field goal. I'm going to call a pass here. But if it's not there, you know, don't do something stupid. Throw it over the middle, have it intercepted, throw it away. We'll take the field goal. But in, a, in an opportunity like this, don't you want to see what your backup quarterback can do? Oh. You want to put him in those situations. No, I'm going to call a pass here. Don't yeah. get me wrong. But I'm just saying that's what you got to do. You got to realize you don't have to force it. The field is shrunk. It's tough to pass down here. If it's not there, we'll take the field goal. But I'm going to throw the ball. Four wide receivers for Ohio State. Bowserman has plenty of time looking. Throws to the right sideline intended for Heron. And that went over his head and incomplete so that will bring up a fourth and six let's and watch uh, Bowserman here he goes back he sets up pretty good but you know he's not really sure he, you know I think he saw number two flash underneath and threw it out of bounds but he wasn't happy with it he didn't look comfortable I yeah. guess I'd say on that play and that's what happens when the field shrinks it becomes more difficult to pass especially in the flats because they don't have to protect deep Barclay will try a 29-yard field goal attempt. And this time, the kick is up, and it is good. So Barclay redeems himself hitting the 29-yarder, and Ohio State has a 31 to nothing lead. A good game of football for Ohio State. They're doing what they needed to do. Three more points for the Buckeyes. Big Ten College Football is brought to you in high definition by Phillips HD, available at Target, Walmart, and Sam's Club. Back here at Ohio Stadium, the Buckeyes with a 31 to nothing lead. That last play, last drive, a seven play 62 yard drive, capped off by a 29 yard field goal by Barclay. Again, another kick to the one yard line. Tony Glynn takes it. To make his way to the 19 yard line. Here's another look at that second kick of the day by Barclay. First one, he missed it left. This one, he was good. Well, you're right. You know, first of all, it starts with the snap. We get a better snap. We get a good hold. And it's hard to see there, but you'll see from the other end, his place, his uh, foot placement is a lot better. He was too close to the ball before. Follows through good. I like the way he keeps his head down. And watch. There you go. You know, you tell these guys all the time, Matt. You don't have to look. The crowd will tell you if you make it or not. <laughs> On first down for the Aggies. They give us to Seth Smith. Game three for the tailback. Out of Oakland, California, the junior college transfer. Hasn't done very much today, Seth Smith. Well, you know, if you're... If you're Dwayne Walker, the head coach of New Mexico State, your mindset right now is you're not going to get back into this game, needless to say, but you keep working, you start practicing for next week. And, you know, he, he's got, I like what he's doing. He's laying a good foundation here at Mexico State. And, and you know, they're going to keep plugging along. If they get some first downs, get some things going here, it'll be a big, big, big plus for them. The Aggies 3-5 and five on the season in the whack. They are 1-3. And a quick pass again to Darius Preston. That went off his hands. That's his second drop of the day. There's Coach Dwayne Walker. Played football where he used to coach. The yeah. University of Minnesota. Look at that, that uniform. That's look at great, that. Look, you know? look at those sleeves. Wow. And you know what? He's not the only connection because McKinley Boston is now the athletics director at New Mexico State. And that's one of the reasons why 
Wayne got hired down there, and he used to be the athletics director at Minnesota, and then he was elevated to a vice president. But he's doing a fine job down there, and we wish uh, all those former Minnesota Gopher Big Ten guys good luck, don't we? Uh, what, what, absolutely. What, what do you think about the decision for Walker to leave UCLA, defensive coordinator for three years, take, taking over this program? Is this a good fit for him at New Mexico State? as that pass uh, incomplete intended for Seth Smith. I like his attitude and I respect his courage. New Mexico State is a tough place. I mean, a lot of guys have gotten there and, and not made it. And But, you know, he said, you know, hey, I want to be a head coach and these jobs are hard to come by and I'm going to go find out how good I am. And I love that type of attitude. You know, some places anybody can win. Other places you got to go and you're going to find out if you're a real coach or not. We're going to find out because that's a tough place. Kyle Hughes set to punt it away on fourth and seven. And it's Ray Small back deep at the 47 to receive. New Mexico State now two for nine on third down. I'm ready for this guy to break one if he gets a good punt. Watch out here. Here's Small has a hole and tripped up. Brought down at the 43 yard line. Let's take a look at the Hampton Hotel's touchdown of the game. I knew it was going to be this one. It's my left-handed wide receiver coming around, and he puts the ball right on the money. Touchdown. Another buck I leave on the head. Was that a trick or a treat? That was a trick and a treat. <laughs> <laughs> Good field position for the Buckeyes here, partner. So Joe Bozerman will take over at the 43 yard line under center for the Ohio State Buckeyes in the I formation as Jamil Martin now takes over in the backfield and he gets the ball trying to bounce to the left nowhere to go tackled at the 45 yard line a loss of two Martin sorry to interrupt That's right. seven carries last week 75 yards his first career touchdown in his first game he was terrific last week and uh, really made an impact yeah well Jim Trestle's not going to like that run by Jamel Martin that seam was inside on that play man you got to hit it inside you got to run for four and every once in a while you'll end up with 44 on second and 12 Martin stays in the game. Bowserman to throw. Looks plenty of time. Now fires and just throws out of bounds. Stoneburner and Carter were right there. So a third and 12 for Ohio State with 5.17 remaining here in the third Watch quarter. Watch Bosman here. He can, I don't like when the quarterback keeps dancing up like that. It makes it, when he's not pressured from the outside, that makes it difficult for the offense line. Sit in there, have a little poise, have a little confidence, put the ball in the money, let that clock go off your head if you had too much time and pull it down and run it. On third down. Goes out to the right. Posey to the left. And Carter up top, Osmond under pressure, brought down in the backfield, he's sacked. And Ohio State will have to punt on fourth down. Today's Verizon Wireless Big Ten poll question is, at the end of the season, who will lead the Big Ten in rushing yards? Text your vote to 20284. Vote one for Evan Royster, vote two for Ralph Bolden, or vote three for John Clay. We'll announce today's results right after the game during the wrap-up. Glenn Mason already has his cell phone in hand. He's texting as we speak. Who are you voting for? That's my business, not yours. <laughs> John Toman will punt it away. Marcus Anderson is deep. He'll call for the fair catch at the 12-yard line as he steps out of bounds. Let's head back to Dave Rebson with another Prestone game break. Very interesting developments in Iowa City. Matt, Indiana up 21-7. Driving to go up three touchdowns, but a pass gets deflected. Tyler Sash grabs it out of midair, 86 yards for the touchdown. Indiana just had a TD overruled, and they missed a field goal, so it's 21-14. Wow. I'll tell you, they, they're climbing back in. They're climbing. They're not going anywhere. You talk about living a charm life this year. The Hawkeyes. I, I tell you, I don't, I don't know what Kurt Burns has been doing down there, but he's doing the right thing besides doing a heck of a job of coaching. All the luck seems to be going their way if they get back in this game. But last week, Indiana allowed 26 unanswered po points in that loss to Northwestern. They led 28 to 3, lost 29-28. It'll be a very interesting half of football uh, at Iowa today. That pass to Todd Lee, incomplete. 
Now, you know what happens in that game right now, the psychology of these young kids, Iowa's come back so many times, they believe they're going to come back. And if you're the Indiana guys, you're thinking, oh, here we go again. Something bad's going to happen. And, you know, I, I think that Coach Lynch is doing a great job there in Indiana. He, right now, effectively has to coach on the sideline to change that mentality if he's going to win this game. Bit of a change for the New Mexico State Aggies. Jeff Fleming out of the game. They bring in Trevor Walls out of Waverly, Ohio, the quarterback, and he calls a timeout with 428 remaining here in the third quarter. Now, you don't think this isn't big for Trevor Walls. He's from Waverly. I mean, that's just a kind of a long nine iron from here southeast of Columbus down in Waverly and he grew up. I'm sure he was a Buckeye fan. He's probably got half that town of Waverly up here watching him play today and all of a sudden he's getting his chance. I heard he had 300 people coming to see him play today. Now for the Jack Links Beef Jerky Wild Fan Cam. And look at that. And Halloween, no hey, problems. There you wow, go. Look at that. I didn't know Denardo was here today. Where can I get a hat like that? That's great. That's great. Trick or How trick. come those guys aren't dressed up? I don't know. <laughs> I tell you, there's a lot of red in this state. It's scarlet, I should say. Jack Link's beef jerky. Feed your wild side. Those fans certainly did today. Now you're making me hungry. <laughs> a second and ten for New Mexico State. Fumble the ball. And it goes into the end zone. And Ohio State, it looks as though they may have fallen on top of it. Touchdown. Austin Spindler and Brian Roll were there. I believe Brian Roll fell on top of the ball for the Ohio State touchdown. Well, one of the two guys did it. I keep saying it, but I was really uh, kind of amused when uh, Jim Haycock, the defensive coordinator, was talking about these two guys, and he says, you know, they've been playing behind Marcus Freeman and James Lawrence. These guys are hungry. They can't wait to play and practice. They love being a starter here at Ohio State. They've gotten their opportunity making the most of it. And that extra point by Barclay is good. Ohio State now on top 38 to nothing. Trevor Walls in his first series had some trouble with the snap. The ball goes off his hands and Ohio State with another score. Rosen, Glenn Mason, Anthony Heron here at Ohio State. The Buckeyes on top, 38 to nothing. Football fans, you can create your own football highlight reels each week with the Big Ten football mashup presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Go to mashup.bigtennetwork.com right now to compile your favorite plays and share them with your friends. Mashup.bigtennetwork.com. A look at Terrell Pryor, who is done for the day talking with head coach Jim Trestle trying to I guess maybe learn some more and just keep uh, growing as far as being a quarterback. See I thought he was asking but, Terrell Pryor what do you think I should call <laughs> you know what do you think there. Maybe he wants to be an offensive coordinator yeah. but his playing days are over. Tony Glenn back deep to receive. One thing about Barclay great leg he's got as every okay. kickoff he's had has been to the one yard line or deeper so. The Aggies will take over at the 20. Their last drive resulted in seven points. I'm supposed to have one ball, right? Last, last, uh, uh, you know, I, I see Pryor with his pads off there, and I hope this doesn't come off like I'm second guessing Jim Trestle because I think he's a great football coach. I was always against that, you know. I, you know, if you're a football player, put your uniform on, keep your uniform on, and that's just the way it is. We're going to take the right tackle out now, and he's going to go change, and then the left guard, and then the linebacker. Leave your uniform on. I used to make guys even wear their uniforms when they were out for a week because they were injured. I wanted to keep them into the game. Gain of two for New Mexico State. Now, whose decision is that? Is that Pryor? Is that Trestle? How's that? How's that happening? Well, I, I don't. You know, I. I'm sure Jim noticed he was standing right next to him that he didn't have his pads on. So obviously it, he's OK with it, which is fine. He gets to run to his team the way he likes to run. I'm just stating my opinion. I like to keep those guys all dressed up. But he's not taking off his pads without the OK of the coach, right? I would I would think if Jim didn't like it, he'd send him back in and tell him to get dressed again. Seth, uh, 
Robert Clay on the carry, gain of three. And the reason I say that, he's the only guy down there. That's a team. T-E-A-M. It's, it, it's a team game. It's the greatest team game that's ever been invented. And, you know, either you're part of the team, you dress like the team, you are the team, or you're not. And I, I just, I just, you know, I'm sure Jimmy would get mad at me if he heard me saying this, but, you know, I, He's been mad at me before, and I guess he's mad at me again. And, and, and you know, that's his decision. He gets this one thing about a head coach: you get to run the team the way you well, want to run it. I mean, here's what's happening: it's 38 to nothing. Ohio State's on top. Obviously, New Mexico State is not coming back. Terrell Pryor's day is done, so he's not going back in the game. Maybe he's cold, and there's a fumble. No, a shuffle, shuffle pass. pass. Shuffle pass. No, wait a minute. This is football. Okay. This isn't baseball. It's not like you take the pitcher out and you send him to the locker room to take a shower. It's not that way. I, if, if, what you're saying is, hey, Terrell, go ahead and take a shower and change up, and we'll see you next week. So he's not Manny Mar uh, Ramirez no, yeah. showering in the no, bottom I, of the night. I just, you know. <laughs> That's just me. I'm old. You know, Denard always complains I'm old-fashioned. I'm, I'm sure this will be a topic next week on Thursday night when we're in the studio. And Denard will disagree with me, and Revson will jump all over my case, and they'll think I'm wrong when I'm really right. Are you going to be talking about other things aside from the best press box food? <laughs> I saw you get your hot dog on at, the, uh, at halftime. That, uh -oh. that kick is bobbled by Small, and then the Ohio State Buckeyes fall on top of it. I ate a hot dog. Keep Not only was it a hot dog, it was a great hot dog. I get three hot dogs. Here's Small going back. Oh, took his eyes off it. That's what happens. It's hard to feel the ball when you're running backwards like that. 46-yard punt as Travis Howard. Great job by him to fall on the ball. So Ohio State will take over. Joe Bowserman at the 33-yard line. We got that unbalanced formation against two back set. They're gonna throw the ball. Bosman, he's gonna take off and run, looking for some room across the 30. Brought down at the 33-yard line, a five-yard pickup. Bosman might be a good football player, but I can tell you one thing: he is no Terrell Pryor running the football. <laughs> and, he, and that's not a criticism not. because I've not seen another guy around lately like like Terrell Pryor. It's, Vince Young in Texas was like that. Well, what's your take on Bowserman? He's a guy that uh, he went and played minor league baseball for three years in the Pittsburgh Pirates organization. That wasn't working out. Now he comes back to school playing football. Uh, you take on the decision process for a guy like that to come back, leave, leave baseball, and say, I'm going to give football a try again. I mean, like Chris Wanky did at Florida State, probably a pretty good idea. That means he's a pretty good athlete. I like that run. You know, I was I was critical before Jamel Martin. I liked the way he cut back there and got his shoulders going north and south. That's the kind of running I like, especially out of the eye formation. A six-yard run for Martin. As that's enough for a first down at the 39-yard line. I wonder what the record is for first downs, because the high state's getting a lot of them. They're really featuring the unbalanced formation this second half it might be just uh, for the scouting report to mess up Penn State next week and Martin again on the carry up the middle across the 45 to the 46 yard line last week against Minnesota Martin did this A booming run. See, he did that's, not want to go down. That's where that seam is. And that's where he's been hitting it today. And that's the seam he didn't hit, hit when I was critical of him before. He's hitting it now, though. You mentioned first downs. Minnesota, uh, Ohio State, 21 first downs in what's, the game. What's the record, though? Do you know? We're going to find that out for you. <laughs> Got our crack stats team. They are ready to go. Boom, Heron on the carry. Pickup of one. And that'll bring up a third and short. Now, I mean, they probably won't do it now, but you know, I told you before, the last time they were in the third and one, Mexico State jumped in the goal line defense. That's a great time to run a play action pass. Well, first downs for Ohio State, their record was 39. They had 39 first downs against Drake back in 1935. Wow. You're going to break that record today? And there's Boom Heron. He's gone to the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10 touchdown. Yeah, hear the boo. 53 yards. 
There was no one in his way, and he was gone. Well, they had everybody up in the line of scrimmage. And that's what happens. You lose the integrity of your defense. I understand why you're doing it on third and short, but if you break that first line of defense, you're gone. That's why they call it a safety when you have a guy in the middle of the field. No safety, this is what can happen. Five plays, 72 yards, two minutes, 42 seconds. And Ohio State is on top by a score of 45 to nothing. Great run by Boom Heron. Everybody getting into the mix. Jordan Hall has had a fine day running the ball. Jermil Martin, a couple runs you like. Now Boom Heron coming off that ankle injury. Talked to Jim Tressel earlier in the week, and he said he wanted to get him some reps. You know, not play him a lot, not start him, but get him back feeling good, and he's got to feel great about a run like that. Yeah, actually, he said, you know, on Tuesday, I said, ah, I don't think so. Wednesday, ah, maybe. By Thursday, he said, you know, I think he, we can play him a little bit. He looks pretty good to me. And hey, you know who really looks good? Yeah. After that, this is that first field goal is Devin Barkley. I think they're okay. And, you know, you know, we hope that uh, Aaron Petrie's going to be okay. But if not, I think the kicking duties are in good hands. Aaron Petrie was injured. He was run into by Marcus Anderson on a kickoff. Anderson clipped him a little bit low, went off with a knee injury, and Barkley's done a nice job. Missed that one field goal, his first field goal attempt, but then bounced back and has had some fantastic kickoffs. This one goes to the five. Grabbed by Tony Glynn, looking for a hole, trying to break it outside, and forced out of bounds at the 25-yard line, and that will end the third quarter. So Ohio State continuing right where they left off in the second half. A terrific third quarter for the Buckeyes, capped off by Boom Herons. Big touchdown run, 45 to nothing, Ohio State fourth quarter coming up when we come back. I'm wrap up immediately after the game, only on the Big Ten Networks. <laughs> Matt Rosen, Glenn Mason, Anthony Heron here at Ohio Stadium as the Buckeyes have dominated. They lead 45 to nothing as we begin the fourth quarter. That's a gain of one for New Mexico State. Now for the Rotel Velveeta combination of the game because you can't win without the perfect partner. And look at these two, Devere Posey and Dane Sanzenbacher, the two wide receivers for the Buckeyes. Posey, uh, he threw a pass to Sanzenbacher. Great connection there. That was a little, little trickery. You've been talking about all that all game. Yeah, all he needs uh, for the hat trick now is to carry reverse for a touchdown. <laughs> then if he does that, I think I'll let him kick an extra point. Now, at what point does Trestle uh, sit Posey and Sanzenbacher and maybe get some other guys some playing time at wide receiver? Well, you know, I got to be honest. If I was there 45 to nothing, uh, I'd be empty in the bench. I mean, at least the second yeah. teamers that have been working hard because, uh, you know, that's great for morale. And you're right, at this point, you'd hate to. Uh, Posey's coming on. Uh, he's becoming your go to guy. You'd hate to get him injured right now. Not that football's a dangerous game, but, you know, let the other guys play. They deserve it. Third and nine from the, or let's call it third and 10 from the 25 yard line. Jim Haycock's already substituted on defense, and I guarantee you what he's told these guys if you guys ever want to play again, you better not give this shut up out. Shut up, out. <laughs> shut up, out. Shut out, up. Nathan Williams in a defensive end, putting some pressure on the quarterback. Stepping up is Walls, and he's brought down. A loss of five on the play as Lawrence Wilson got to the Aggies quarterback, and that will force force another punt for New Mexico State. Yeah, there's Lawrence Wilson. He's a senior from Akron, Ohio. He's paid his dues around here. He's played before, but give him a lot of playing time. Give him a little love out there. You might need him. John Simon was also in, forcing the pressure on the quarterback. Deron Carter back deep now to receive the punt. Smart move. You know Ray Small can do this. Let's find out about Carter. That's a pretty good kick. Forcing Carter back to the 30. He looks up. 
Steps up to the right side, finds a hole, bounces to the 50-yard line as flags come in. Haven't had that many flags in today's game. It's been relatively penalty-free, with the exception of a pass interference play early on. Well, Devon House, he thinks there's one too many. I can tell you that. <laughs> 50-yard punt, 20-yard return, but that'll bring the Buckeyes back. Bring their turn. Little block in the back. Number 10, return team. 10-yard penalty. First down. Timeout. So Ohio State will take over. When we come back, they've been dominating. 45 to 10 is the score. Rascal Flats. It has been all Ohio State in today's game. In today's game, 460 total yards of offense after three quarters, just 54 yards of offense for New Mexico State. They have not been able to get anything going on. They have not been able to get anything happening whatsoever. Well, we knew it would be tough sledding for New Mexico State. I'm not sure we knew it was going to be this tough, but I'll tell you, Rascal Flats, I'll tell you, they're great. Number one song I got on my iPod right there. I love it. it gets me fired up every day. <laughs> Bo Belandi was in a tailback a moment ago as Bosserman steps up in the shotgun, firing down the left sideline, and it's off the hands. He had him. He threw it a little low to the inside. A little baseball turn there for you. <laughs> he just missed the corner. Looking for Washington down the left sideline. And just barely missed him. It's touring, uh, Torian Washington. Well, they're mixing it up pretty good. They went from a two-back set with Bowserman here at quarterback, then they went to a, a no-back set, an empty backfield. Now they're back to their traditional spread set. And on third and ten, Bowserman's going to throw it again. Looking for Carter. He's got him down the right sideline. Well, at the 23, they're going to give him 35 yards on the reception for the true freshman, Duran Carter. And that's Bowserman's first completed pass of the afternoon. Well, they got the same set. And don't, don't be surprised if they don't come right, if they throw the ball, come right back to number nine here, because he's got no help over the top. Well, they're going to hand the ball off to Delandi. Bo Delandi on the carry. Well, they lined up with three receivers over the field, and Bosman knew right away, but the safety was cheated that way, that he had one-on-one -on -one coverage going down the sideline. That was a perfect strike for the ex-baseball player. Well, they said he had the best changeup in the Pirates organization one year, so that's pretty good. That was a lob pass. It wasn't a fastball by any means, so looking pretty good. This time, Bosman is going to run the option and crosses Ooh. the 20-yard line before taking a hit at the 19, a pickup of two on the play for Bosman. You know, I don't know much about baseball, partner, but I would think... All right, what do you need to do? I would think that if you said he had the best fastball or he had the best curveball, that the changeup would have to be third. Have to be third? Well, third. And well, you can mix up a fastball and uh, you know, fastball the fastball change. or the curve rather than the changeup. No, oh, there have been some great pitchers with, with the changeup. Honda Generators red zone. Take a look. Four possessions for Ohio State. Three touchdowns, one field goal. Bosserman on third down. They need to get to the 15. And he's going to throw, but Carter was angling inside that ball toward the back of the end zone and incomplete. And that'll bring up a fourth down for Ohio State. What are they going to do here? I'd kick the field goal. And you know what? That's what they're doing. Not that they need the field goal, but I mean, you don't want to run the score up. And plus, you want to give this young man, Devin Barkley, as much experience as you possibly can. Devin Barkley on for a 36 yard field goal attempt from Annapolis, Maryland. Toma's the holder. And the kick is up, and it is no good. It's wide right. So he missed one left earlier. 
Now we missed the 36 yarder. And Ohio State after that drive they come up with nothing. I jinxed him by saying good things about him. <laughs> I, I apologize. And you named him where his hometown was from. A little body English. Just, oh man. Just couldn't pull it enough. Yeah, that's a good, good snap. Good hold. The place foot looked okay. Placement of his foot. He just missed it. Was trying to draw it in a little bit. It just didn't go. Yeah. Just pushed it right. 10 10 remaining fourth quarter as the Aggies start from the 20 yard line. The handoff is to, to, to Clay. And he crosses the 20 to about the 21 yard line. Look how this day's turned out. Bright sunny day. We got blue sky out there. Oh, it was 80 degrees yesterday. It was a beautiful day. Today started off rainy, wet, cold. It was cloudy, a lot of wind, and then all of a sudden it's kind of turned about the second quarter, third quarter's turned into a gorgeous day here in Columbus. Do you think these Buckeye uh, faithful are rooting for Indiana to upset Iowa today? <laughs> I know one thing just the Penn bit. State faithful are. <laughs> and the handoff again. Gain of two on the play for New Mexico State. Today's Verizon wireless connection is. The Posey reception touchdown pass to Dane Sanzenbacher. 38 yards. A beautiful strike from the wide receiver. The wide receiver. Look at that play. You know, the more I watch that, yep. I think his first look was to Terrell Pryor. He's looking at Pryor going down the sideline on the trail route, and they got him covered, and he had enough poise to come back to side. side I say it's about yeah, stuff I, on his you man. You look at that. We see that again. You'll see that. Third down for the Aggies, and again they hand the ball off and nowhere to run. And that will force another New Mexico State punt. Ron Carter comes back to receive at the 31 yard line as Kyle Hughes will punt it away again. It's one of the things that makes you nervous, partner, when you start mass substitutions is getting the right guys on the field in the kicking game. You saw one of the Buckeyes running on the field late. Most of the time, even you take a guy in the game, he's still in the kicking game. It gets too confusing. His 10th punt of the game. Uh -oh. This is a low snap, had trouble with it, picks it up, thinking about kicking, it gets oh. it off. Oh, great play. Look at that punt, takes a, the Aggie bounce, rolls all the way to the nine yard line. Carter picks it up, looking for running room, forced out of bounds at the 14 yard line. A 67 yard punt. <laughs> By Hughes, what a terrific play. Heads up. You're talking about dodging a bullet. Wow. 67 yards for the punter. Ohio State takes over. Big Ten Network football is presented by the United States Marine Corps. The few, the proud, the Marines. And brought to you in part by Rotel and Velveeta. Try Rotel and Velveeta's famous queso dip, the ultimate game day snack. And by Phillips HD. Made to feel, made to amaze, Phillips HD. Matt Rosen, the coach, Glenn Mason, and Anthony Heron here at Ohio Stadium. Buckeyes take over at the 12 yard line. Check that the 13 is Bozerman. Hands the ball off to Casey Christian, who forces his way out to the 20 yard line. Today's Polaris. Hardest working player is <laughs> Kyle Hughes. After that play he just made, why wouldn't he be? Well, not only that, how many times has he punted today? Hey, he's had a workout. Ten punts today, averaging over 44 yards a punt. He's been terrific. Uh, he's been absolutely terrific today. And that punt he made saved probably uh, you know, at least a touchdown for the moment for the Buckeyes as their offense has been rolling. Great play by Kyle Hughes. Let's head back to Dave Rebson with another Prestone game break. Dave. Well, Matt, it is getting very interesting in Iowa City. Ricky Stanzi, who has thrown five, yes, five interceptions in this game, hits Marvin McNutt 92 yards, the fourth longest passing play in Hawkeye history. They're within three at 24-21. 
Wow, thank you for that, Dave. That is unbelievable. Five picks, and then that play right there, and they are right in the game. Unbelievable. Five interceptions. Oh. Here's Bosserman on third down, looking deep for Carter, and he makes the catch. Out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Now that reminds me of Chris wow, Carter right looking there. like his dad. Oh man, a 40-yard reception to Deron Carter. Well, he also returns punts, so his dad never returned any punts. Ooh. Right on the money. Oh yeah, good catch. Got the foot in bounds. Terrific catch uh, for Deron Carter. I'm going to make this call right now. It's a, it's a good catch. First down. Move the chains. Deron Carter coming into the game just nine recession receptions 82 yards and he has had here's, here's a, a look at it, three catches 82 yards if this one counts and yes it does he got the knee down oh, yeah. in bounds that's a reception officials right on the spot oh yeah after further review the ruling on the field is confirmed of a catch first down there's the right knee down, no question about it. So the 40-yard reception stands, 82 yards receiving, and that has matched his season totals today, one game. 6.15 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Two tight ends in the game for Ohio State as Bosserman hands the ball off to, Kate, to Joe Gantz as Ohio State with their sixth running back to touch the ball today. And they're just grinding it out on offense. There he is, Chris Carter. Number two on the field, number one in your heart. Check that, I said six, <laughs> seven running backs have run the ball today. We're not done yet. I'll tell you, I said it before, but his dad, Chris Carter, he was a football player to us. He was just a tremendous, tremendous athlete, player, competitor. Now, what about Deron Carter? Can he be like his dad? I don't want to say can he be as good as his dad because I don't know that anyone can be that good. But well, what's his potential? Well, I, I don't know. That's, that's big shoes to fill. Obviously, him coming in here and playing right away as a freshman, that tells you something because they've got good receivers here right away. And, you know, I, you remember Chris Carter at the end of his career. It's hard to remember what he was like at the beginning of his career. They might have been very similar, and this guy's going to do nothing but get better and better and better, especially with the playing time that he's getting. On third and five, the Buckeyes will go with an empty backfield. Five receivers. Bowserman looking for Carter. This one off his hands. He couldn't hold on. Would have been short of the first down anyway. Uh, here's a look at the Big Ten standings. Iowa in danger right now to dropping to four and one, but who knows? That game very, very close. Ohio State, this is a non conference game, so they'll stay with that four and one record. They'll improve to seven and two overall. And then there's, right, there's Penn State. So as the final three weeks start to play out, or the final four weeks, including this week, uh, anything can happen. That, anything. That's right. That, that's why the game is so big there today with Indiana leading that game because if Iowa wins, they still control their destiny. If they don't, you got Prior to the snap. False start. 73 offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat fourth down. So that'll make it a fourth and ten. Ohio State was going to go for it at, instead of punting or trying the long field goal. And we like to see what they'll do if they'll. Go for it again, or if they'll bring out the punting unit, it looks as though they're going to go for it as the offense stays on the field. Jim, Tre Jim Trestle pleased about today's performance from his team? I don't think he'll be very pleased the way they started this mm -hmm. game. But all of a sudden, the way they've dominated this game, you know, what are we talking about? He'll be pleased the way the defense played. Yeah. Let's face it. Ohio State will have a fourth down coming up when we come back. They've been rolling all game long. They lead by 45. Back here at Ohio State, the Buckeyes leading New Mexico State 45 to nothing. Today's Land Rover defensive play of the game is. Well, we'll, we'll play some ball. We'll do it after this punt. We'll go check it out. But 
That's coming up in a moment. It'll be a fourth and ten from the 41 yard line. As Marcus Anderson is deep at his own 10 yard line. Toma punts it away. And it bounces inside the 20 and goes out of bounds at the 17. Now let's check out today's Land Rover defensive play of the game. And it was that bobbled snap. And the touchdown by Brian Roll as he fell on top of it. And the Ohio State Buckeyes, that made it 38 to nothing at the time. And Ohio State, they have been rolling all day long. A slow start in the first quarter, but the second quarter got things going, led uh, 21 to nothing at the half, and then bang, bang, bang. It's been just all Ohio State. So you thought Ohio State was 20, 28 to nothing. You thought Ohio State was going to go for that fourth and long, and I think Jim Haycock says, hey, no, you're not. Uh -huh. <laughs> You got to check my field position. He thought about it for a little while. I, I got to thought about it. He said, "Come on, yeah. Coach Dressel, I need the shutout." <laughs> you made me put those young guys in last week. It cost me. That's how those defensive coordinators are, man. They're they're greedy. Three yards on the run. Injured player. As there's an injured player on the field, and that's the left guard, Joe Palmer. with the injured player on the field. Let's go downstairs to Anthony Heron. Matt, you guys were talking about hot dogs earlier. I got hungry and came up <laughs> into the stands, and I, I ran across the most popular guy in the stadium here. Buckeye guy, what's up? Anthony, how you doing, man? It's a great game, man. We're right here. We're going to stay to the end, and we're not leaving. Now, you're normally in the front row. What are you doing back here in row three? It's a recession. This is all I can afford. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, you are head to toe, Buckeye. I don't know if you guys can see what's going on, but they got a package running right now. Yes. How long ago did you start this Buckeye man? It's been quite some time. You know what? I've been a lifelong Buckeye. You know, I'm a hometown team for the hometown guy. Now, you travel on the road to the games as well? Absolutely. Next week, we'll be heading out to Penn State University. It's a 3.30 game, so I can sleep at home and leave out around 4 or 5 in the morning. Now, how are you expecting the fans in Happy Valley to react when you get there? Hey, it's not so happy in Happy Valley for anybody. It's a tough place to play. <laughs> all right, Buckeye guy. Appreciate all the spirit. Thank you, Anthony and Big Ten Network. We love you. All right, Matt, save me a hot dog. <laughs> hey, hey, Anthony, it's Halloween every day for that guy. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Mace, I just have one question for you. You let him drive your car? Yeah. <laughs> you noticed that, huh? How does it? How did he get to do that? I had that. I had that car while I was in college. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, Joe Palmer is on the sidelines now, as the trainers tend to him. It'll be a second and seven, with four minutes remaining here. Another bobbled snap by Trevor Walls. And he's brought down. Let's head back to Dave Rebson with another Prestone, ga uh, Prestone game break. Iowa and Indiana, what's going on, Dave? Well, Matt, you're not going to believe this one. After Iowa got the ball back, Stanzi, remember, five interceptions in the game, 66 yards to Darrell Johnson Culianos. That puts Iowa on top. They just picked off a pass. They are driving again on top by four. That is unbelievable. Now, what would you expect on Halloween? I mean, uh, <laughs> trick and treat, I tell you, that's unbelievable. Iowa pulling out all the tricks today as they were in bad shape early on and somehow clawed their way back into the game. That's a pickup of five for New Mexico State. Stay tuned for the State Farm wrap up for scores, highlights, and analysis of today's games right after the game. As it's the State Farm wrap up. When you were a kid, what was the yeah. favorite thing you got when you went and rang doorbells on trick and treat that they gave you? You know what? For me, it was uh, sugar daddies were good. Mm -hmm. I like the sugar daddies. <laughs> Snicker bars. Uh, Snicker, a Snicker bar. Snickers though. are good. I, you know what? I love nerds. <laughs> For whatever the reason, I love nerds. I was always excited because they always seem to be a lot of them in there. I eat them for a while. Good punt. Good high kick. Carter calls for a fair catch at the 26 yard line. The Phillips HD player of the game is Dane Sansenbacher. Four catches, 72 yards, averaging 18 yards of reception. Two TDs had only four touchdowns entering the game 
and had two today one from Terrell Pryor the other one from Devere Posey he was very very strong early on making some nice catches yeah old Danny making all those people up to Toledo proud of their hometown boy doing good down here in Columbus Dane with just 388 yards entering today's game four TDs as I mentioned two today and he's been great as Ohio State looking to run out the clock with 2.15. That was Bo DeLond. For a gain of one. Well, how would you think of your first experience here in Ohio State in the horseshoe? You know what? It's wild. It is really wild here. The fans are great. They, they get here so early, and they make noise from start to, to finish. The script Ohio at the half was amazing. You were, you were singing along with what the band was doing on the field. You were, you were loving it. Absolutely loving it. Casey Christian in the game at running back, and he gets the ball. And stopped at the line of scrimmage, but battling his way forward. But the whistle comes in. Fans don't like that as they didn't think his forward progress was stopped. I'll tell you one thing about the Ohio State fans. They are very knowledgeable and they'll stay in the game. And, you know, this game obviously is, for all intents and purposes, is, is, is over. But, you know, a lot of people have thinned out. There's still a lot of people here. And, you know, the best thing about me being here today, I get to come back in two weeks for the game day with the Big Ten Network for the. Iowa game. What I don't understand, you're like a mayor in this in this town. I was hanging out with Mace yesterday, today. He knows everyone. <laughs> everyone knows him. Well, and they just hand you free stuff. It's great. <laughs> Isn't that the way it's supposed to be? <laughs> Absolutely. Joe Gantz on the carry with 45 seconds remaining. Stay tuned for the State Farm wrap-up for scores, highlights, and analysis of today's game that's coming up right after our game here at Ohio Stadium as it has been all Ohio State today. 45 to nothing. Terrell Pryor doing a terrific job. Ran the ball for 89 yards, or a net of 83 yards on nine carries. Threw the ball 11 of 23, 135 yards and a touchdown. He was good. Devere Posey was terrific, not only catching the ball, but throwing the ball as well uh, he as he has that touchdown. Impressive. I, I still say he came off his first receiver, which was Terrell Pryor going down the sideline, and he went to his second read and put the ball right on the money. So a question for you real quick. Tell me, did Jim Tressel and Ohio State accomplish what they were trying to today? I, I don't. Well, let me just tell you this. They are a better football team at the end of this game. Uh, and that's what he was talking about. They could make more progress by playing a game. Their offense got better during the course of this game. So I'd have to say they got better. Final play of the game as Bosman takes a snap. They hand the ball off. And that is it. Ohio State with their third shutout of the season. As they have defeated the Mexico State Aggies by a score of 45 to nothing. A dominant performance in a non conference game for Ohio State. They were terrific. <laughs> we you're talking about you're terrific. I thought they did a great job today. I thought they came in, they, they really held New Mexico State's offense in check. They, New Mexico State couldn't do anything all day long. The defense was great. And as far as the offense go, they did different things. They ran the ball well and they threw the ball. They, they had some trickery with the uh, onsides kick after the first touchdown. I thought they had a good game plan going in. I thought they executed it well. Well, I thought their defense was yeah. terrific, and I think their <laughs> offense got better. I, okay. Like I said in the open, this this offense for High State is a work in progress. We talked about the offensive line. They've had so many different lineups because of injuries. They haven't had their running backs in there. Uh, the supporting cast hasn't given Terrell Pryor all the help. He can. One thing is constant. Terrell Pryor can kill you running the football. When he drops back to pass, you better keep him contained because the worst thing that happens when he pulls it down because there isn't anybody in college football that can run with the guy. Terrell Pryor was 
great running the ball again and we know that's his strengths. The big question is can he make the right decisions. It seemed as though he did that for the most part today and Ohio State uh, comes away with a 45 to nothing win. Now what about the next coming the upcoming weeks for Ohio State things do not get uh, any easier. They get very very difficult in the final three weeks. All you have to worry about not the final three weeks next week. They got to pack their bags. They got to get on the plane. They got to fly up to Happy Valley and play a very improved very inspired do or die Joe Paterno Nittany Lion football team. And we thought with the way things were going in Iowa that maybe Ohio State would have a share of the top at the top of the Big Ten. But that is not the case because uh, uh, Iowa is now on top in that game. So it's going to be very very interesting for well, Jim Tressel in Ohio State. Well, There's Jim Tressel and the, the Buckeyes are down there in the suit section in front of the band and going to sing Carmen Ohio. I might join in and if you knew the words I'd force you to join in. <laughs> going to sing. I did sing. <laughs> I didn't want to spoil I was, it. I was waiting I for know it. the words. I was rocking back and forth, but I didn't want to have all the people out there listening in the Big Ten Network have to listen to me with my terrible voice rather than those Ohio State Buckeye football players down there. Well, again, another one of the terrific traditions here at Ohio State as they defeat the New Mexico State Aggies 45 to nothing, their third shutout of the season. Let's head downstairs to Anthony Heron, who's with the head coach, Jim Tressel. Anthony. Jim, you spoke during the week about not wanting to miss opportunities in this game. How would you grade it out? Well, you know, we, we got a lot of opportunities for a lot of kids to play. We had a chance to compete, come out here, and hopefully get better. And it's a little like November, and you got to improve in November. And we noticed that Terrell came out without the shoulder pads on. Is he okay physically? Oh, yeah, he's fine physically. We just decided that, you know, he had run the ball enough and been roughed up enough today. It was time for Joe to get some reps. Now, next week, got Penn State, a big stretch run in the season. What's your team still working at? Well, we're working on everything. Uh, when you get in games like that, you better be perfect at everything you do in the special teams and defensively and offensively. Uh, and you know it's going to be a tough one. Well, you know we'll be watching, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. All right, that was Jim Tressel happy about the win. Now for Glenn Mason and Anthony Heron and our entire broadcast crew, I'm Matt Rosen. Now let's send it back to Dave Revson in our Big Ten Network studios. Again, the final score here in Columbus, Ohio State 45 and New Mexico.